Why, hello. I have returned. Yes, I did hit the button this time. I remembered. How is everyone? We'll wait for people to come in and figure out that we're live. Yes, it is dark. That's intentional. I didn't fuck anything up. Howdy. Hello. Hi. Hello, all my N-words. Are you playing a good FromSoft game this time? Well, that's what the title indicates. Correct? Hope you're feeling better. Oh, I am feeling better. At least a bit better. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty bad for a little while there. Hello, Mubjli. Uh Yeah, just uh, as of a couple days ago, well, actually, really as of yesterday, my voice started sounding normal again. There was a good period of time after that last stream where my voice was completely fucked. <laughs> Like, uh, I could almost not speak at all. It was painful to speak for a couple of days. It was really, really bad. And, uh, yeah, it, it was partly due to, I think, the fact that I had not streamed in years, and so that was a lot of talking to be doing. But mostly, I think, because of the fact that I was streaming while being very, very sick. I'm not nearly as sick anymore, luckily. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty bad for a little while there. Hey, Wolfie, good to see you, bud. Played Dragon's Dogma 2 yet? I have not yet played Dragon's Dogma 1. I don't actually know what it's about. You should see if Cinematic Venom would come on one of, come on one of these with you in chat. Maybe. I don't know. I still have to reach out to him because I'm really bad about doing things that I need to actually get done. Someone made another Trungos review. Did you see? I did. I wasn't expecting it, but, uh, yeah, I looked at the reviews and I noticed that there were a couple new ones after that highlight went up. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Anyway, we got a good number of viewers in now. I think it's time to explain what we're doing today. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, I saw someone in the chat named Nick who insists I did not read his super chat last time. I'm almost positive I did read this because I remember it, but on the off chance that I didn't, it's uh, rewatching 200 at the moment, EFAP 200. It's the Gartic phone section in part two, and Rags looked at the timer and said, you have three-fourths of a pizza left, and my first thought was, God damn it, Wolf. Great seeing you hanging with the EFAP audience again, man. Yeah. I apologize if I did forget to do that. But uh, I'm I'm almost positive I did, but I'm not going to sit through three and a half hours of me coughing and throwing up to figure out if I did or did not. Anyway, is the screen supposed to be black? Yes, and you'll understand why in just a quick moment. So, uh, oh, was the owner of Trungo's chill about everything? Did he say anything about it? I, I tried to look on their Facebook page to see if he said anything. I don't have a Facebook account, so I don't know if there's, like, certain pages I can't see or whatever, but I didn't notice anything. Anyway. On the previous stream, some people had some issues with the game that I was playing. I was playing Elden Ring. It's a game I quite enjoy. But some people were like, you know, maybe next time you should play a good FromSoft game, not this disgusting Elden Ring game. So I was like, okay. I have all of the other FromSoft games. Granted, I cannot play two of them on stream because while I do have Bloodborne and do have Demon Souls, I do not have a way to stream them from my PS5 to my PC. I tried to do that like remote play thing that PlayStation has and it's just fucking horrible. Just don't even don't even fucking bother with it. Um, maybe if one day I get a uh, an Elgato. I used to have one, but I never thought I'd actually be doing this again, so I sold it years ago. 
But if I ever do get an Elgato again in the future, then maybe I will play some Switch and P, uh, PS5 games, you know, going forward. Wolf, you're as beautiful as the day I lost you. Kisses you on the lips, but not in the gay way, though. Who's your favorite Dark Tower character? Mine's Eddie. That's that's pretty gay, not gonna lie. Um, oh, that's difficult. Ooh, I do like Eddie a lot. I really like Susanna, too. She became a really cool character. Father Callahan was awesome in the later books. Oh, so, so good. And then Roland is a really great character as well. Oh my god, we're getting sidetracked. Anyway, you know, good is good is subjective, as we all know. We've all been told. So I said, you know what? How about we play uh what everyone claims is the best the best FromSoft game, right? Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. The best the best Dark Souls game. <laughs> Watch any good movies lately? Anything to recommend? Good to hear from you. I know I have. Um, any new movies? Or any good movies in general? Hold on. I always save everything that I see on Amazon, and then I have to figure it out from there. I'll get back to you on that. My favorite character in Wheel of Time is Madrim, and my favorite part of the books for me is when he storms the Stone of Tear. It cements his character for me. Yes. <laughs> Oh, poor chat. Oh, I'm gonna have to figure out the fucking audio. But because Dark Souls 2 is incompetent, it doesn't have that setting in the main menu where you would think it would fucking be. I will get back to you on that super chat. Uh, we'll go through it again just like we did in the previous stream. Oh, okay, here we go. Lower that shit. Screams in Welsh. <laughs> Come on, guys! It's it's the best Dark Souls game. Hey, don't worry. I have a no. Fuck the cutscene. I don't care about the story. I have a bottle of Bacardi here. I also have if I finish this because it is half empty because I do drink sometimes. I also have a bottle of Kraken, also half finished. But you know, I also have a bottle of Mackinac Island rum. Very very good. Also half finished. And then I have a bottle of uh, Dr. Bird rum. I have a lot of rum. I like rum. Quite a bit. So, anytime something cringe happens, I'm going to take a drink. So, I may die in this stream, but, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is happening? Oh, okay, I was standing inside of a ghost. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, let's have our first drink. I don't have shot glasses, so I'm just going to uh, approximate what I think a shot would be by drinking it straight out of the bottle. Ah. Bacardi's good. I like Bacardi. The one time I forgot my earbuds at home, Re. Also, obviously, stream Evil Within 1 and 2 for Halloween, Kappa. Hope you have a good day. I may do that. There's a lot of games I need to stream for Halloweenisms. Oh, shit. I need to sign into the thing. So that... No. I'll do it later. Okay. Oh, I, I've, I love the, the way that the camera like, snaps instead of just smoothly does the thing that I actually want it to. We'll see how well this goes. Look at these skeletons. Whoa, what the fuck are those? What is that thing? That's fucked up. Hell yeah, it's time to prove that it is complete in its incompleteness. You see, Moogely made like a, a 10 hour series or something about how this is actually the worst game ever made. I'm going to prove him dead fucking wrong. To see the care and creativity that has gone into them, especially IK, the Harkonnens and Homeworld Cheaters. Was that part of another super chat that was not finished or something? I. I'll have to go back and check. Bacardi, throw that shit out. We need a Haradura. I've not heard of that. If that is another kind of rum, I do like to change 
different types of rum. What the fu- I just- Yes, I'm sure my name is my name. Alright, chat. What class are we gonna do? We need to make this really meme-worthy. Ugh. We got warrior, knight, swordsman, bandit, cleric, sorcerer, explorer. Wow, this is a really gay looking explorer. And deprived. What shall we do? This is the first EFAP I've managed to catch live, so happy. This is... I mean, this isn't EFAP, but if you want to interpret that that way, then cool. I'm so happy to be here, though trying to catch up on EFAP is hard. Haha. -ha. Neat. Why is the rum always gone? Because Wolf drank it all. Bulbins, Bulgloid, love to you, Wolf. Good to have you back. Neat. The Chad class, of course. Deprived, deprived. I'm seeing a whole lot of deprived. Gender study class. I don't know if that's one that we were doing. <laughs> Alright, it looks like everyone wants me to go deprived. So I'm gonna go deprived. Gift. Okay, we'll do the life ring thing. Should we do a, like a meme face? Should we make him like as ugly as possible? Should We should do that. Oh, uh, I don't know if I can pretend to be fat. It's already hard enough to be actually fat. Homeland. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> oh dear. What are these faces? They look horrible. Oh, you can do random. Let's do random. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is this Nosferatu looking motherfucker? He looks kind of like Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Alright, we'll 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 do Andrew Tate and we'll, we'll make sure we take off the hair. To really sell it. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. This character's so fucking ugly. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. All people come here. Shut up, old bitch. Oh, Christ. Oh, right. I have to look at him for a while. We need to get some clothes. Particularly a helmet. I didn't think I'd be albino. Jesus. Do I even have... I don't even have a... Really? I don't have a weapon. Oh. I wish I knew that before I decided to listen to chat. Huh. Alright, fuck it. I guess we don't have a weapon. Maybe the RNG will be nice to us and give us a, a weapon quick. Oh, Christ. This is going to be a bad time, isn't it? Actual Harkonnen. <laughs> yeah. Fade Rotha wishes he could look... <laughs> look that good. Okay. Time to beat you to death. It's the dude from the movie Powder. I am not familiar with that. You can fist the enemies. Yeah, that's what that's what I'll do. I'll fist everyone to death. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Oh good, we got a chungus over there. We got another guy there. Uh, all right. I like how I stabbed him with nothing. That was pretty neat. <laughs> I like the sword effects, even though I'm not carrying fucking anything. Hey, dude, do me a favor and bully Mauler into reading Berserk already. I'm not wasting more money doing it myself. Have fun with this good video. Okay, look. Oh, cool. Now we have a, a weapon. Um, yeah, no, I've tried to get Mauler to read shit in the past. It's not gonna work. 
I tried to sell him on Dresden Files by telling him it was pretty much just Buffy, but with a dude. That didn't get him to do it. I even told him that James Marsters is the narrator and it didn't do it. I don't think it will ever work. Hey, I've been watching since EFAP 1. My first SC was telling you and Maul to watch the... Oh, Super Chat was telling you and Mauler to watch The Hunt. I know you watched it with him by now, so do you love it? Yeah, the 2012 one? That was really, really... Or was it 2012? It was the one with uh, Mads Mikkelsen, right? Yeah. That was a fucking excellent movie. Also slightly terrifying in an existential way. It existential way. Very, 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 very good movie. Try harder. I can't. Yeah, Mahler says he can't hear audiobooks, so I guess he's he's just got a skill issue. What is that? How you how did fucking synthetic tard say it? Skill issue. Skill issue while he's having clear skill issues. We'll see if I have skill issues. I don't think I'm gonna have skill issues because I'm the clearly greatest Dark Souls player ever. Yeah, back when you had to jump really retardedly. There we go. Shoot the knife. That'd be interesting if I could. Snoy movie game. Right. He has so many little quotes in there. Skill issue. Yeah, he did say it in kind of an oh oh way, didn't he? Skill issue. Perfect. <laughs> how how badly do you think he'd be offended if he... Oh, fuck off. Right, because Elden Ring does it differently than all the rest of the Dark Souls games. Do you think he'd be really offended if we told him that he says skill issue like he's doing the oh -wo voice? What if we all just called Synthetic Man a furry? Any way to piss him off would be really funny. Every time someone launches Dark Souls 2, H Bomber guy ejaculates. Oh, we don't want to have him do that. What the fuck? A statue blocks your way. Why? Is this not the tutorial area? <laughs> Why would a statue be blocking my... Okay. I guess I can't complete the tutorial. <laughs> Unless I can go up there. Been watching since EFAP 1 was live and I'm now doing content creation of my own. Neat. You guys are a big inspiration for me and how I look at things. Awesome, dude. Wolf, great to see you up and running again. Sorry to add to what's already a huge list, but if you can give Opath's Blackwater Park the song a listen. Either way, enjoy this clearly superior game. I actually have listened to Blackwater Park, the whole album. I haven't listened to anything else from Opeth yet, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a band that a friend of mine uh, recently told me to check out. And Oh joy, the Deathblight things. I love them. I have heard it, though. I quite liked it. That? No? Okay. I guess the statue blocks my way for the rest of the tutorial. Sure. Yeah, Scholar had some odd ideas about where to put statues. So how do you remove them? Can you remove them? How did so many people die in here? Weird. Does Elden Ring have enough dudes in armor for H Bomber guys liking? I'm not sure. I would assume so. But then I'm not H Bomber guy. Is this a live stream or a premiere? Well, it's a premiere, of course. Can't you tell this is pre recorded? You need an OTEM. 
I don't know what that is, but okay. I'll pretend like I will remember that in five minutes. Tree branch of yore. That, that's a weirdly lazy sounding name. Mm. Hello, Sadman. Okay, I need a key. Alright. Wolf, are you feeling better? I am at like 80% efficiency. Take that as you will. Man, the sun is extremely bright. It's overexposed almost. I like how there's a sad, depressed person in every FromSoft game. Cool. I don't remember anything you said, and I don't care. I wake up every morning and go, at least I'm not, not H-bomber guy, and that's what gets me through the day. Damn. Hello, bitch. Are you the next mark? Sure. Or merely a pawn of fate? No, not that. Well, I don't know. Look at me. Yay, Estes Flask. Exact, hey, exactly what I need. You know, it'd be really cool if one of these days from Zoff could figure... Oh, shit. No, I don't have enough souls. They could figure out that maybe it's a stupid design decision to make me have to press A after I think the conversation is already done to find out that the conversation is, in fact, not actually already done. Especially when you have to do that like 15 times. I don't understand what the, the fucking point is to make the player do that. Oh shit, we should do... No. Not quite what I wanted. Uh, we'll do that, and then we'll do that. Okay, go back to the fucking thing. Wolf doing a demonetized speedrun. Oh, because I called her bitch? Yeah, that might get me demonetized. That'd be funny. Wolf, thoughts on Fear Inoculum. I really liked it. I know a lot of people you know, thought it was boring. I, I really liked that style. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of the, the interlude songs, like Chocolate Chip Trip or you know, that French-sounding one. I didn't care for those. You could take those out, and I'd, I feel like the album would have been better. Not that they really make the album worse, but I, I don't think there's any purpose to them. Also, make sure to drink some water every once in a while. Why would I need water when I have rum? It's basically water, but tastier. You guys said I needed to stop drinking Pepsi. You never said I had to stop drinking good drinks. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds smooth. Movie Bob out of character? What, my character? He's nowhere near to big enough for Movie Bob. I like how this game feels like a fan-made Dark Souls game instead of an actual official sequel to Dark Souls. I don't know, there's just something about, like, everything. <laughs> like, it, it looks decidedly pretty ugly. It feels really jank to move. Like, it's hard to explain in a way that makes sense. I, I mean, I, I watched Mahler's videos on him, and he described it pretty well in that, like, most games that are, like, even halfway competent have, like, full 360-degree movement with your joysticks. But this game does not. It's just, like, like, eight directions. You got forward, backward, left, right, but then you got diagonal, 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 diagonal. And the same thing goes for, like... Uh, maybe not exactly the camera, but the camera feels really stiff. It really does not feel... Like, I would be... If I didn't know anything about Dark Souls, and you gave me this game, and told me this was Dark Souls 1, and then gave me Dark Souls 2... 
or gave me Dark Souls 1 and then told me that Dark Souls 1 was actually Dark Souls 2, I would believe you. It'd be very easy, because this one's so shit. Cool, a talking cat. Exactly what I wanted. You have the modified control dot any. I've tried to do that and it did not seem to really fix anything at all. You got a funny fucking hat, bro. Ooh. That's a lot of money for shit I do not have. Oh, you know what? I completely forgot some stuff in the starting area. We might have to run back. Hey, Wolf, is there going to be a tonal cooking EFAP reaction supercut in the future? Yes. That is on the, the docket for things to do. I was initially thinking of doing, like, a full supercut of just, like, literally every single time the tonal was covered, but then I realized that video would be, like, 18 hours long, and I thought, you know, maybe that's a bad idea. Oh, my God. Why is it stuttering like fuck? What the hell? No! This is the one thing I didn't want to happen. This is weird. Why would it be happening like this? Is this the game telling me that you're not supposed to go backwards? Okay, it stopped. No, it's back again. Okay, wait, what, what, fucking roll? No, rolling does not stop it. Oh dear. Jesus Christ. This better fix itself, otherwise we're gonna be playing a different game. <laughs> I'm gonna recommend a manga called Goodnight Pun Pun, but with a huge warning as it gets super depressing at, and real at points. Neat. I love depressing things. Why is it stuttering like that? And now it's just... Okay, no, it just like fucking schizophrenically decides it wants to stutter and doesn't. I don't understand. It's like the game's telling me, like, please don't play me. Please play anything else. I don't understand. Because I, I did a test run of this earlier, and it did not... Well, no, I was playing Dark Souls 2 normal, not Scholar of the First Sin. Maybe Scholar of the First Sin is just extremely tism? I don't know. Your PC might have the big gay. Well, I am slightly gay, so maybe it does. Oh, no. Did it fix? No. Oh, shit. No, nope. must run away. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is happening? I don't understand why it's doing this. <laughs> have you read Dresden Files? Oh, if you read Dresden Files, yes, I have. Uh, have you read Codex Alera in the Cinder Spires by Jim Butcher? Not. Uh, I haven't read Cinder Spires yet. I do have the first book. Um, and I did read the first Codex Alera book. Uh, I really liked it. You know, it wasn't great, but it seemed pretty fun. And interesting enough for me to uh, check out the rest of them. Okay, seriously, if this is how it's gonna run, we're gonna not, we're gonna not play Dark Souls 2. This is extremely shit. No. Oh dear. The game will continue to stutter. Maybe you should play a ga good game like the Callisto Protocol. No, James. I've already played and refunded that one. It's very, very bad. 
Turn off V-Sync? I don't think I have V-Sync on. I guess I can check. I didn't even see an option for it. No? Game options. God, even the menu is stuttering. Videos settings, here we go. No, no, wrong one. No, stop! Why is this how it works? I don't even think there's a V-Sync setting. Yeah, there's not even a setting for it. What the fuck? <laughs> uh... Oh, fuck me. Wait, did you actually? Yeah, I did. Because I was interested in it, because I was like, you know, I heard some iffy things, but it's been a while. Maybe they updated it a little bit. And, uh, wow. Callisto Protocol fucking sucks. <laughs> that game is so shitty. Which sucks, because I was like, oh, damn, this seems kind of neat. And it's really like they were like, what if we did Dark, or, sorry, Dead Space, but we did everything significantly worse than the first Dead Space did it. Jesus. Full screen borderless window? I don't know why that would change it, but I guess we can try that too. Oh my god. That's painful. It's not even a fucking borderless windowed mode. Fucking of course. <laughs> well, it all started to go bad when I left Majula, so maybe we just go back to Majula and it starts not being shit again? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Maybe the game is just like tisming because it didn't understand how to handle a player going back. Play the Kong game. God, I forgot the Kong game came out. I remember seeing Mahler play that and it just didn't even look funny. Uh, why is it running like this? What the fuck? Normal Dark Souls 2 did not run like this. Frankly, this game didn't run like this until I started going backwards, so fucking... <laughs> oh my god, did get... Okay, no, no, it's still happening. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay, I don't know how- well, I guess we can sit at the bonfire. Maybe that fixes it. Maybe this fixes it. No, no, it's still stuttering even when I'm at the bonfire. Dark slows. Yeah, okay, we're not playing this. <laughs> like, I can deal with cringe, but I can't deal- I can't deal with stuttering cringe. That's- that's shit. But hey, we'll be able to figure out a, a different game to play. I have plenty of games installed right now that I have not yet played, or have played, but not thoroughly. And we can all decide which one I'm going to do. Probably need a restart. I guess we can try a restart. Let's... Let's see. If it's still stuttering, though, like... Oh, I can't deal with that. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh wait, is it back to normal? Camera seems... No, no, it is still doing this. Oh dear. No, we're not doing that. We are not doing that. Maybe we'll do the normal Dark Souls 2 next time. Since it didn't seem to do that shit when I played that earlier to test it out. Well, yeah, we're we're not gonna. I'm not <laughs> look. I'm willing to torture myself, but I'm not willing to do that kind of torture. Okay. So, what the fu what happened to my taskbar? Why is it gone? Oh Jesus! What are you doing, monitor? Okay, there's my taskbar. All right. So. We have plenty of games that we can play.
I played a bit of Lies of P, but I didn't get super far into it. I played... Oh, I feel bad for Sekiro. I've tried to get into this game so many times and I always get sidetracked by something else. We can do that. We can do Lies of P. Uh, we got plenty of games that we can play that are not Soulsborne. Uh, this Kina game is like kind of Souls-ish. I haven't played any of the Resident Evil remakes. Have not played Signalis. Have not played System Shock. Not Thymesia, not Cuphead. I have played Stalker pretty thoroughly. I have those installed so that I can play them uh, when Stalker 2 comes out. Play Cal no, I'm not pl fucking buying Callisto Protocol again. I refunded it for a reason. It's shit. Hi, Wolf. Can you nudge Booper into playing Prey? I think he would enjoy it, considering it has similar themes to Soma. Also, love you. I have told him about Prey. I really liked Prey. Play Hades, because Mahler won't. Sekiro. Soltaire. Soltaire? I don't know what that is. Everyone has completely different... Yeah, there there is absolutely no no agreement in the chat. Why can't I see Gollum? Did you think I was actually going to play that? Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, Hades. Oh god, is there like a way to just like poll time? Oh, I guess I could make a poll. Hold on. Okay, I remembered to mute. What is it? Straw poll? Is that the thing that we usually use? Straw poll. What's the poll that we usually use? Someone's got to remember. Or no, at least. Mahler, what fucking poll thing do we do in EFAP? I never actually had to make one of these before. I have played the first Resident Evil, not on PC. I played it on Xbox. <clears throat> I haven't played any of the remakes, though. Hellblade is not a stream game. Oh, I've played Hellblade a few times. I like it. If it's down to a vote, get Gollum in there. I'm not fucking playing Gollum. <laughs> I already had to play it vicariously through four of you fuckers. Straw poll. Okay. Create a poll. Here we go. What is the game? Multiple choice? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We will say Sekiro. Uh, I'm only going to add, like, I'm going to give you five choices. Because I don't want to fucking make this difficult. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get some different games in there. We'll also do... We'll do Hades. Signalis is one I've been kind of interested in. Sekiro, Hades, Signalis. Do 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 do. Oh, I don't know. It's so difficult to fucking figure it out which one I actually want to play. I guess we could do RE4. Or, I've heard good things about Rain World. Okay. Create poll. Share. Copy. All right. Crash or Spyro? I played Spyro. I haven't played a lot of Crash. 
That's another one I've been meaning to get into. All right, there you go. I posted the like fucking five times. Figure it out amongst yourselves. You should definitely get Helldivers 2 at some point. Easy game of the year of the games released so far. That is one game I plan to play at some point. No golem. Motherfucker. <laughs> was my was my supercut not enough? I can't do more golem. It'd be unfair. I already know how to speed run the game because I watched four of you fucking suffer through it. Sekiro winning. Right, I should probably actually look at the thing. Show results. Yeah, it looks like Sekiro is winning. We'll give it, like, two minutes. You know, we'll wait until 3.43. No! 3.42. We're not doing 3.43. None of that bullshit. Been playing Pal World, personally. Pretty fun. I'm not really interested in... I look kind of lame. I voted RE4, but my vote meant Gollum. <laughs> Oh my god. No. We're not doing Gollum. I'm, I'm not prepared for that. What happens if Sekiro runs like garbage too? Oh dear. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we play Doom. That'll run on anything. Couple more chances to vote in the poll. Here we go. It's been a long time since I've seen you, so I was wondering what your thoughts are in Halo Infinite. I really don't like it. Speaking of, I noticed this today. What's this Bionicle bullshit going on? What, what, what is this fucking armor? This looks fucking stupid. God. It's like they can never fucking figure out anything to do with the armor at all. I don't understand it. Like, every time it seems like they're trying to learn their lesson they find some way to be like all right well we're not gonna learn Ugh, it's just so stupid like what is this what is practical about this why are why are his cheeks so long Ugh. Ugh. gross do not like i'm not hating on bionicle it's just not why is that in Halo? <laughs> Alright, looks like Sekiro wins. Alright, we're playing Sekiro. You might want to turn down the volume. It might rape our ears because I haven't set this one up. Oh, I should probably make sure that it's actually going to do the thing that I want it to. There we go. We'll do new game. The Halo season two coverage is Saturday, correct? I don't know. I didn't. Is hey, is that done? Some twenty years. I have no idea. Okay, we need to turn down the volume. It's a little too loud. Okay, there we go. Ornamental letter. A letter thrown into a well. Crow's wolf. Oh, perfect. Your destiny awaits you at the Moonview Tower. Escape from the well and find the tower bathed in moonlight. Even without a blade, you can reach it. Stay silent. Stay vigilant. Ah, usually says no next Saturday. Who knows what this Saturday shall be? I have no idea myself. Oh, in English? Should I not be playing the game in English? 
I suppose we can change it to a different language. Uh, if I can figure out how to change it to a different language. Subtitles? No, where's the actual... It would be an input, wouldn't it? No, 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 no. Huh. Ah, fuck it. We'll do it this way. Now, I have made it... Eh, not, not super far into the game, but... I kept getting stuck at that fucking guy in the tower. Like, you go to that big, like, city place, and then... He's just kind of at the top of the thing, and I could never beat him because I suck at this game. Quit the main menu. I could do that, but I'm also not going to. It's a FromSoft game. We're here to kill shit, not to listen to the story. Maybe I'll do that someday. Maybe I'll fucking finish the game someday. That'd be amazing. The City Palace, is that what it's called? As long as you could Makiri counter, you'll be fine. Hmm. Maybe like Mahler, I'll only Makiri counter when I get to the final boss. I do like that Makiri counter that you can use on the spear guys, though. I used the shit out of that. Wolf made it less than halfway. Lightweight. Look, it's not my fault that every time I play this game, some other game I'm more interested in comes out. When playing Sekiro, remember, two stab twist, two stab twist and gut. Cool. I'll make sure to remember to use... Oh, God. Galadriel said that, didn't she? Gross. Hey Wolf, can you please tell me Fringy's opinion on Across the Spider-Verse? He refuses to say what it is because he's gay. I'll fucking know. <laughs> I didn't watch it. It, it. In the sense that I didn't watch it, so I didn't ask him about it. Hope you've been well. I have been variably okay from time to time. Pellets. Gonna fucking move? What? Okay. Not Galadriel, Guyladriel. Right, I, I gotta use the unoriginal name that took about three seconds to come up with. Okay, here we go. I gotta say, parrying in this game, when you actually can do it, which is not often for me, feels very, very fun. Man, Skyrim mods have come a long way. I had a friend when Elden Ring came out, uh, who genuinely- oh, fuck. What? <laughs> Was my health really low? I didn't realize that. Yeah, he, he looked at me and he was like, oh, is Elden Ring the new Skyrim? And I was like, oh my god. That, that makes me want to cry a little bit. There we go. Nerd Roddick worked really hard on that name? No, he didn't. Don't lie to yourself. Okay, I think there's some guys up here, too. Yeah. Wasn't there another one? I guess not. Oh, maybe I can get inside. No, I can't. Don't forget the Makiri counter, those counters. I don't think I have Makiri counter yet. I haven't even lost my arm yet. This 
Skyrim is pretty forgettable, but the open world felt better than Elden Rings. I'm gonna be honest, I have never pl uh, played a single Bethesda game to completion. I've found every single one of them to be so extremely boring. Here's how you do the thing that you've already been doing. Shiro is a cheating bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I like how in Elden Ring, that first boss you fight, like, in New Game Plus, when you actually have, like, the tools and shit to be able to beat him, it, you just have to fall off a fucking cliff to progress. Oh, shit. There we go. New Vegas is the best because Bethesda didn't make it. Probably. Were you watching when Mahler finished the game with Makiri counter after streams of people screaming at him to use it and him refusing? I almost died laughing. Uh, I wasn't watching it, but I, I know the lore. Hey, how's it going, Wolf? It's going pretty decently. Is this the white Samauri? Well, he's got some white on his face, so I guess it must be. Okay. I think there's, like, lizards down here. Yeah. Skyrim is the most overrated game of all time. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> like... I don't think I've ever even made it through, like, the the main quest of any Bethesda game, because they're all just so fucking dull. I've never enjoyed them. And the gameplay is just... Ugh. Okay, I don't think I can make it up there. It's a him, Tom Cruise. Who? Oh wait, maybe I am supposed to go over there. Hold on. Have you watched any of the TV series Shogun Wolf? Yeah, I've been uh, going through that with a friend. I'm really liking it so far. Uh, we haven't caught up to the latest episode yet. But... Uh, we got through... God, where, were we, where did we leave off? Uh, shit. I'm totally blanking on it right now. I know that, I know the antagonist bitch was just recently introduced. I don't remember if that was last episode or the episode before last episode. So like, the episode where they used the cannons at the very end, we went two episodes past that. So I think, I think I've watched up through episode six. I have not yet watched episode seven. I've been really liking it so far though, it's really cool. I have the book, too. I just haven't had the chance to start reading that. A reference to The Last Samurai. Yeah, but what is that? Is that to do with the white Samaori thing? I, I don't understand. I'm retarded. I admit. Wolf, you found it. But yeah, I've been really liking Shogun so far. I would, I, I'm gonna wait until the series is completely finished before I give like a full like yeah I recommend this. But like so far, I mean it's been it's been good. I've been really liking it. I think seven is out, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't actually know which day they've been coming out. Cause I've been watching it with a friend, and we meet up like usually on Sundays. So, I assume the next episode will be out by that point. No shit. Uh, 
Oh, I'm not actually able to use my healing gourd here. Oh shit. It's not allowing me to. I'm pressing X, but nothing's happening. Uh, oh well, I was gonna die anyway, who cares. Keck, no Makiri. Do you have Makiri counters at this point in the game? I thought you had to wait and, like, earn them. Or is that just a meme because of Mauler? <laughs> Heard good things about Morrowind. Okay, yeah, I haven't played Morrowind, so I don't know. Could be good. I've heard good things about it. Up on the D- oh, that's what- oh, okay. Well, what is X- oh, wait, X is how you use your, uh, your prosthesis mods, doesn't it? Hold on. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. No, RT is prosthetic tool. X is action or collect loot. Okay. Okay. I... All right. That was my bad then. Depends on the definition of Bethesda game. Most published Bethesda games make Doom and Prey are considered good. Ones that are act ones they actually make range mid to bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know the the difference between like the produced ones and the ones that they developed, but um yeah, I I like Prey, I like Doom. I well, I like some of the Wolfenstein games. <clears throat> Mainly being I like two of the Wolfenstein games. But uh in terms of uh anything they've made I mm, can't say I enjoy them. Yeah, yeah, cough, you asshole. Wait, what is it to, uh... There is... God damn it, that's not what I want to do. Isn't there a way to... Oh, no, I might be thinking of, uh... Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, because there's a way to, like, sheathe your sword. And for some reason I thought that applied here. I guess it doesn't. That's one game that we should stream at some point. Once I have things. <laughs> okay, RB attack, RB after breaking. Okay. Swap your arm moves and sprint. Right trigger for running is so much more comfortable and no claw hand. I don't mind claw hand. I'm just, I'm so used to it from all the other from soft games that I don't think it's it would be a big deal for me. Wolfenstein peaked with young blood. Okay, Rags, you can stop using your alt account. Isn't PC version of that game coming soon? Oh, right, that is true. But I already have the game on my PS5. I don't think I want to buy... Well, maybe if it's cheap on PC. If it's cheaper on PC, then I'll buy it on there. But otherwise, I don't really think I want to spend $60 on a game that I already bought on my PS5. I know how to do all this shit. I played a little bit of this game before. Ever played Return to Castle Wolfenstein? Uh, I have not, no. Oh, it's full price? Yeah, I'm not gonna buy it then. Not when I already fucking own the game. You, Rags, Mauler, and Fringo should play Helldivers together. Eh, yeah, maybe. 
problem is, uh, you know, coordinating everything, and I don't really have the same schedule as them. Nah, I meant to do, like, a fucking jump attack on him. Return to Castle Wolfenstein is excellent. Especially with the fan recamp mod, real RTCW. I'll keep that in mind if I ever play that. Fringy lives in Upside Down World, too. That's true. He lives in a place that doesn't exist. Very difficult to uh, coordinate around that. Wasn't there a guy? All oh, right, here we go. Woo! What is Dead by Daylight again? Isn't that like some fucking kind of like Left for Dead, or is that something else? I know I've seen it on Steam like a billion fucking times, but I've never actually played it. Wolf, never got to hear what you thought of Ori 2. Favorite area, favorite boss, better than the first. Both games are so great. I would say it is objectively better than the first. I don't know if I subjectively like it as much. I, I really, really like it. I, I fuck it. I love that game. Um, but yeah, it's hard to... Oh shit. No, 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 no. Fuck. Ah, come on. I'm retarded. Oh, shit, I didn't... Okay. Fair enough. What was, what was I saying before? Oh, right. Um, right, yeah. I think it's because, uh, you know, the first game just hit me in a way that very few games ever have. And so, it was already gonna be very difficult to uh it was gonna be very difficult for that game to win me over more than the first game did but i very very much love it my favorite area Ugh, that's really difficult i want to say bowers reach but i might be a little bit biased because i love snowy environments um Favorite boss. So I think um, Mora was my favorite boss in terms of the actual fight. But Shriek was my favorite boss in terms of like the emotion behind it. Like the narrative reason behind that fight and especially what it means at the end of it was really, really profound. So I, I like those two the best, but I like them for very different reasons. Because I think Mora is... Uh, a more fun bi uh, boss mechanically than Shriek was. Because Shriek has a little bit of a bullshit move with that whole, like, I'm just going to delete the, the fucking ground a couple times and throw, like, literally everything in the world at you all at once. But, um... Oh, God, the emotion of that fight was so good. Wolf, help my English teacher, thinks that Love and Thunder, Multiverse of Madness, and Quantumania are all very good. What do I do? Uh, get over it. <laughs> Some people are going to like things uh, that you don't like, I guess. Ori in the Blind Forest had the benefit of being entirely novel and hilariously more beautiful than anything else at the time. Will the Wisp was better, but a sequel, so expected. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There's also a degree of disappointment for me in the sense that I feel like the abundance of over-criticism that the first game got that I feel like was really undeserved and mostly like, almost entirely from Hollow Knight fans who are mad that Ori had um, a lot of praise, despite it not being, at least uh, in their eyes, as good. Um, 
it kind of changed the gameplay in a way that made the sequel feel less original than the first game. Not necessarily in a bad way. I prefer the gameplay of the sequel uh, in isolation anyway. But, um, yeah, I, it did feel a little less original, and that was something that was like, mm, I wish you didn't just uh, do what every other fucking Metroidvania does. But oh well. It was still a very, very good game. Right, this guy's a fucking little boss down here, isn't he? Although I can get the jump on him and take down at least half his health. Man, I almost really fucked that one up. <laughs> I think the big thing that I always have trouble with in this game is remembering that jumping is actually useful. <laughs> Oh shit. Eesh. No, 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 no. Oh shit. I'm probably gonna die here. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot that you get resurrected in this game. Or do you not? Oh no. Okay, right, because this is the first time. Oh, I almost feel like that's bullshit. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't have gotten the kill on that guy. Oh well. It's a shame too. I love Hollow Knight and Team Cherry. By the way, Sekiro gets easier when you realize it's a rhythm game. Hmm. Did not think about it that way. IRC, before you left, you were working on Metro Exodus video. Did you play the Two Colonels and Sam's Story DLCs? What did you think? Uh, I, I own Two Colonels. I don't think I ever got around to actually playing it. I did play Sam's Story though. I really liked that one. Hope all is well with you, Wolfie. Yes, I, I, uh, I'm doing fairly well, I would say. It's down here. Is there anything down here? Don't look like it. <laughs> okay. You know, if if we could, uh get someone out there to contact Miyazaki and just tell him, can you stop making dog enemies and flying enemies? Because they're never good in any game you ever put them in. That would be really, really great. <laughs> they fake you out. It's like the Condemned games. I have Condemned Criminal Origin. I That was one of the first PC games I ever bought. I never really got very far into it, though. I'll have to give that one a shot. Oh, poor guy. Maybe he should consider having a less shitty haircut if he doesn't want to get stabbed from above. 
Uh, there was like a troll or something down here, wasn't there? Where is it? I'm almost positive there is one. Isn't it supposed to be like right here? Ah, there he is. There we go. That'll save me some time. Miyazaki's list of favorite things. Poison swamps, dog enemies, berserk references. Yeah, seems about right. Oh, he likes uh, characters ripping their limbs off and replacing them with other things, too. I noticed that happening so many times in these games that I almost wonder if it's like some extremely obscure fetish. Doesn't it happen with like half the bosses in Elden Ring? Fire Giant does it. Uh, fucking... What, what's his name? Morgoth? Is that the first major boss you fight? I don't remember because George R. R. Martin has like the most fucking unoriginal spot uh, style of naming characters ever. So like half of them have names that sound almost exactly the fucking same. Godric. Right. Morgoth's just like the one who looks almost exactly like him, doesn't he? No, no. Godric's... No, Morgoth's the one with the tentacle face who looks almost exactly like Moog. Right, there's Godric, there's Godfrey, there's Morgoth, there's Moog, there's Melina and Melenia, there's Radigan, and... Wasn't there another one? Not Rikard. Fuck. You guys know what I mean. He he just always does this. Where he's like, how about I make a name that sounds almost exactly the same? Or, in the case of A Song of Ice and Fire, how about I make a name and then use the exact same name for a different character who's completely unrelated so that it completely confuses the shit out of you constantly. Radon, that's who it is. I feel like he must have taken that from Robert Jordan, who also did the exact same thing, and it was equally as annoying. Don't forget Melvin, brother of the Joker. Is that real? You see, I can't always tell when people are memeing. Because real life and memes have basically kind of hit this synergy where you can't tell the difference between the two anymore. GRRM literally just used his initials as the basis for God's names twice. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about that. It's a little embarrassing. It is real? Jesus. That's retarded. <laughs> Melvin is a channel awesome reference. Of course it's a fucking channel awesome reference. Anything retarded has to come from channel awesome. Right, I can do the... Ah, uh, I need... How many do I have? No, no, not nearly enough. Uh, yeah, I don't want to sell any of that just yet. Oh, well. I'll get to it eventually. Holy shit. Can't believe I actually survived that. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to do. That was useful.
Okay. I think the cannon guy... Yeah, cannon guy's right there. Die. America married Godfrey and had Godwin, Morgoth, and Moog. Radigan named Renala and had Radon, Rikard, and Ronnie. Then America married Radigan and had Mikola and Millennia. That's a fucking hell. I like Elden Ring, but those naming conventions are fucking stupid as shit. Good to hear your voice, Wolf. Is it possible to get a highlight video from EFAP's coverage of that god-awful Wanda defense video? Uh, which EFAP was that from? I'll add it to the list. What a pleasure to have you around again, Wolf. Keep up the hard work. I hope you're feeling much better these days. Been to the mountains recently? I have not actually been out to the mountains, <laughs> ironically, since I left YouTube. Uh, however... I do have a big vacation planned in late August and going into early June, where I'll be out in Colorado for quite a while. I've been missing the mountains. I need some variation in terrain. Michigan doesn't have a whole lot of that. <laughs> All right. Whatever all that was, I'm sure it was important. I feel bad for not paying attention to the story, but, like, I know I'm going to forget most of it because FromSoft has a tismy way of fucking explaining stories to people. Wait, you're Wolf? The Wolf? I've only ever seen videos of you on EFAP. I genuinely like to listen to you talk. I may be the same wolf, or maybe I'm an AI pretending to be one. No, I'm not going to do that. I am no AI. Because AI is lame and gay. And I may be gay, but I'm not entirely lame. Uh, you know, I could really fucking use those firecrackers right now with him. Oh, uh, I mean, I guess I don't need them, but it would be really, really nice if I did have them. I went from soft to get Brandon Sanderson in. The guy basically already writes settings ready for video games. Yeah, I feel like his settings would work really well for video games because they don't work particularly well for books. I mean, they would work really well for books if he knew how to write characters in a way that wasn't extremely boring. I'm not exactly a huge Brandon Sanderson fan. He wrote the setting for Infinity Blade. Brandon Sanderson did? Or are we talking about George? Oh, I can't imagine it's George. Misty Mountain High? Maybe. I don't really smoke that much anymore. I used to pretty frequently, but then I had a bad experience with edibles, and then I just kind of, like, don't do it anymore. I do have um, edibles from time to time because I have trouble sleeping, and, like, taking, like, one gummy at night, like, knocks me the fuck out. But I don't really smoke anymore. Just not really into it. Stormlight is excellent. I think you should consider it. Uh, I may. I do have the first four star, uh, Stormlight Archive books. But I, I'm, I'll admit, my opinion of Brandon Sanderson is influenced entirely just by uh, Mistborn, which I was deeply unimpressed with. I have heard Stormlight is better, but I, I just haven't uh, read it yet. Couldn't have been George. Not enough incest. True.
Yeah, I had, like, the worst fucking experience with, uh, edibles, like, about a year ago. I mean, I wasn't smoking that much at that point either, but essentially, um, I had a friend over, and we were gonna watch the Dragon Ball movie. It, it was very funny from what I remembered. However, we were both in, like, the mindset of, we're gonna get really drunk and really high while we're watching this. And... I guess he won, like, some contest or something at a local dispensary, and he got some edibles from it, but he's not really a big edible guy, so he was like, oh, here's, like, a bag of M&Ms. I don't really want them. And I was like, all right, I'll take them. Uh, to put it into perspective, I am, I had eaten one edible one time, like, three years earlier. I was very uninitiated in the edible market, I guess. And... Uh, I didn't think to look at the back of the package to see how many edibles I should have. And I was just like, huh, there's a hundred M&Ms in here. I will eat the entire bag in three minutes. Holy shit, that was a horrible idea. The back of the package said um, I would find out the next, or two days later, really. The next day was horrible. But two days later, I would find out that the back of the package said, take five, wait 45 minutes, then see where you're at, and uh, maybe take one or two more. And I took all 100 all at once. And I, I genuinely felt like my soul had sank to the bottom of my body. I was like glued to my futon. I was fucking against it staring at the screen, completely out of my fucking mind. And my friend looked at me and he was like, bro, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, when he left, I was like totally out of my fucking mind. And he was like, gonna be okay if I leave? And I was like, yeah, just make sure you call me tomorrow to make sure I'm still alive. And he was like, okay, buddy. And he, he left and, you know, I know it's, like, not really physically possible to overdose on weed, and I knew that then. But at the same time, I I was thinking that, and then I was like, but what if I'm the first person to overdose on weed? And I, I was fucked. I was completely out of it. I went back. I, I just slept on the futon for, like, five hours. And then I woke up in the middle of the night somehow managed to shamble my way over to my bedroom. I woke up the next morning, and I was still completely out of it. I was so fucked up. I had to, like, sh uh, hug the wall to get over to the kitchen to feed my cat. And I, I was... I was having a very bad time. I sat in the bathroom and threw up. And by the time the high had finally ended... I had been high for about 16 hours. It was actually the worst experience I've ever had with weed in my life. And <laughs> afterwards, I pretty much just uh, subconsciously was like, I don't really want to smoke anymore ever again. <laughs> and I have not yet uh, smoked since that day. I did uh, take edibles later, but only like one gummy at a time and just to get to sleep. Yeah. Uh, don't be like me. Don't, don't have fucking a hundred edibles in three minutes all at once. Would not recommend it. At least I took it with more grace than Boogie. At least I was actually out of my mind, unlike Boogie. What's up with that? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack? Hey. I mean, true, but... Hey. How do I see how much Sen I have? Oh, shit. Oh, wait, is that? No, no, it doesn't tell me. 406. Fuck, I still need 100. Oh, those firecrackers will be extremely helpful in fighting the fucking uh, ogre. 
Is that what it is? Or is it a troll? I like Mistborn's magic system, but Stormlight does improve on the character and world building is way better. Been writing since he was 16 and you can see him improving over time. Yeah, I mean, I would hope he would improve over time. I mean, he has his reputation for a reason, I'm sure. I guess when I got into Mistborn, or when I started Mistborn, I should say, um, I did so uh, at the, I guess, behest of... A whole bunch of people saying like oh yeah it's like fucking amazing it's really really good stuff it's basically some of the best fantasy out there and I read it and I was like this is not very good <laughs> I, I mean I guess I would consider Mistborn a great starter fantasy but I had already read A Song of Ice and Fire, Lord of the Rings, uh, The First Law so reading Mistborn was like reading a child's book. Not to, you know, shit on children's books, but it was deeply unimpressive, is what I would call it. Oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> this is bad. Oh, there we go. I can, at the very least, say I prefer Sanderson generally over Stephen King. What Stephen King books have you read? Because I don't know if. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can't really argue against preference, but God, I can't it'd be very difficult for me to understand the perspective of someone who thinks that Brandon Sanderson is a better writer than Stephen King. I don't even think Brandon Sanderson thinks he's a better writer than Stephen King. Although that may be because I despise Stephen King as a person. Well, yeah, it sounds like it, because, uh, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't imagine thinking that they're of even remotely comparable quality. Not to shut out your opinion or anything, of, of course, but, you know, I, I, I kind of, yeah, that's unbelievable to me personally. All right, there we go. Give me the firecrackers, bitch. Don't use that for the truth. Okay. What the fuck? Can I not? Isn't this how? Oh, do I need to go back to the uh, old man? I might need to go back to the old man. All right, just need to get to a bonfire, and then I'll do that. Have you any manga, Wolf? I have a few manga. I don't like a lot of manga. <laughs> I find a lot of it to be incredibly cringe. But uh, I do like Death Note quite a bit. I haven't read a lot of Berserk, but I've been liking that. Um, I know it didn't start off as a manga, but the I read Wolf Children, and that was pretty depressing in a good way. Um, Shit, what else do I have? Is that it? Oh, uh, Carsifina. It's a web manga. Uh, I think that's really good. Okay.
Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay, that's how you do it. Right. Oh, I didn't even know I had the shuriken yet. Good to know. Started watching Monster. Do you have any thoughts? Monster? I think I've heard of that. Let me see. Monster. Is that a show or a movie? Monster show. Um, comes up with an anime in 2004. I haven't seen that. Maybe a movie? Huh? There is a 2023 movie. A couple 2023 movies. I haven't heard of either of them. Yeah, uh, I can't say I'm familiar. The anime? Yeah, I've never watched it. You missed my super chat earlier, but my question is, who is your favorite character from the Lycanius trilogy? Mine is Caden, but it's a tough choice. I do like Caden a lot. Um, mostly because of the ending of that trilogy. Like, the whole choice he makes and the way in which it's conveyed is fucking brilliant in my eyes. I really, really like it. Got a second that recommends for Vagabond. A manga is so perfect it is in its source from it will... Wait. A manga so perfect in its source form it will never be adapted? I think I understand what you're trying to say. Right. Why changes the prosthesis? Okay. Where's my EFAP highlights Batwoman? That is something I'm going to be working on. Uh, EFAP highlights of, or supercuts rather, of EFAP movies will come in the future. That one that I uploaded earlier this week was done by Mahler, um, kind of as like a test run to see how it worked. Uh, it is something that I will be doing though, with like specific arcs, so there will be like an, an Andor, well, was, did they do EFAP movies or EFAP TV and Andor? I don't know. Well, you know, there'll be like a, a Saw arc. There'll be the Obi-Wan arc. Batwoman, of course. Just wanted to say Ephraim is one of my favorite Red Rising characters. Yeah, I've really been liking him so far. It took me a while to get on to him. But I've been really enjoying him so far, especially in Book 5. I really can't stress enough how excellent the 5th Dark... Or, the 5th Dark Age. It is called Dark Age, you fucking idiot. Uh, how much I love the 5th Red Rising book. There's been at least two instances in the book so far where I have had a moment where I was like, oh shit. Like, ooh, I can't believe that happened. That doesn't happen to me in books very often. Oh shit. Come on, do your thing. Oh shit. Bad swing. Ah, come on. Ooh. There we go. Stab you in the fucking head. Oh. Oh, shit. I used pellets at first? Ah, damn it. I really should have used my zipline on him. 
zip line. I'm retarded. Grappling hook. Oh, shit. Uh, well, good thing I can die twice. His kicks are parryable? Really? I wouldn't have thought that. Oh, fuck. Am I already out of my firecrackers? I don't think I'm brave enough to try a parry right now. I'm already bad enough at parrying, but I've also only got one more life left. Nope! Oh! That was so close. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Could have done that better. I keep fucking forgetting to use my grappling hook. Oh, I don't think I've unlocked the Makiri counter for that. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go to the bonfire real quick. He did it. He defeated Abby. <laughs> uh, I'd say poor Abby, but I don't really care. That game was so shit. <laughs> Oh, I wish I didn't waste my time playing that horrible fucking game. Uh, damn it. I really fucked this one up. Alright, bonfire again. Dark Age saved Darrow and Lyria. They were annoying me in Iron Gold, then went through so much shit and got me on board with them. I always liked Lyria. Um, I feel like her the beginning of her story could have been paced out a little bit better. I feel like it was a little bit rushed in the beginning. But for the most part, I really enjoy her. Um, I actually haven't gotten to any of her perspective chapters in Dark Age yet, because it's paced so differently from Iron Gold, which is to Dark Age's benefit, because I feel like Iron Gold's biggest issue was its pacing. I liked Darrow in Iron Gold. I was perfectly fine with him. But Dark Age, I mean, I've always liked him through all these books, but Dark Age, I feel like, really takes him up a notch. I don't know. I've been really, really, really impressed with this book so far. I think it's one of the best sci-fi books I've read in quite a long time. Have you tried Lies of P? It's probably one of my favorite games of the 2020s so far. I have. I didn't get super far into it. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I, uh... I got up to the point... Oh, what point did I get up to? There was, like, some garbage... Fire... Monster... Thing. That's a horrible way of describing what it was, but... Um, yeah, there was, like, a boss fight in, like, a, in, like, an actual garbage thing, and it, like, turns into some tentacle thing halfway through in its second phase. I think that's where I tapped out. Like, I got through that boss, and then I just didn't go further. 
Uh, I know there's a way to get up here because I'm not. I don't think I'm ready to take on this boss yet. I was really liking it. I just like wasn't engaging with the mechanics in a way that I probably should have, and so I, um, at a certain point when I got stuck, I was like, you know, I should probably just replay this game and, um, actually try and use its uh, like weird crafting system thing. And then on top of that, I had like forgotten that like it was doing that thing that Dark Souls does, where like the souls of like the bosses you can use to make into better weapons, and I... I kind of fucked myself over with that one. I was really enjoying it, though. I... I liked the world, uh, reasonably. So... It wasn't my favorite. I'm not a huge fan of those, like, steampunk settings. But it was really fun. I actually bought the original Pinocchio book and read that just to... Uh see what they bring in from the book into the game. So I will have to play that again. Any controversial favorites you have is in everyone else hates it, but you love and find value in it? Ooh. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't think so. Or at least none that come to mind directly. I mean, there, there certainly are things that um, I like that I know Mahler wouldn't like. Um, I don't know. Nothing that's like really widely hated, I guess. Angel Season 5 spoilers, but how do you feel about the girl in question? There's stuff in the episode I like a lot, but the Buffy plot feels very rushed, and I can't really describe why. Oh, I don't remember which episode that... I'm really bad with episode names. So... Let me see. I'm better with, like... Um... Oh, that episode. Yeah, I don't really... <laughs> I remember there being some good jokes in there, but I don't really remember that being, like, a particularly good episode. Granted, I've only seen it once, and it was years ago, so... Who knows, maybe, uh... Maybe I'd have more positive thoughts on it now, but... it's It's been shit. I was still on YouTube when I finished those shows I have seen some episodes since then but I I'm not really super familiar with that episode beyond like just remembering a few jokes that I liked wise cracks Pinocchio tangent was that something that was covered on EFAP I don't remember that But I also didn't watch a lot of EFAP after I left the show, so there's a lot of catching up I gotta do. Oh shit, the fucking general. Ooh, no, I gotta take out the other guys before I can take him on. Ooh. Ooh. Oh shit, I need to get out. Get out! Oh. Okay, gourd, or pellets. There we go. I think most approach Liza P with just blocking parrying, which is understandable, but let later bosses really require dodges to not rip your hair out. Yeah, I remember the uh, that big robot boss where the second phase is like a normal guy who comes out of there. I guess he's another puppet. I remember that being the first like major difficulty spike for me. I was having a lot of trouble getting through him. I did eventually. I got through at least a few more bosses after that, but... 
yeah, I, I was getting, I was having trouble at a certain point and had to say, you know, maybe I need to re retry this game later. Oh, shit. Uh, you know what? I forgot there's a bonfire down here. I'm gonna go over there. And then, since that's closer, I'll just come back up. Because I kind of fucked up this area. Recommended sci-fi. Big fan of Heinlein Starship Troopers and thinking of reading The Expanse. Oh, Definitely read The Expanse. That's one of my favorite book series ever. Uh, Red Rising is also really good. Um, I will warn you that the first book is pretty tropey. And it's pretty much... Um, <laughs> it's like The Hunger Games if it was a lot better. But... Um, yeah, the second book onward gets really, really good. And I'm on book five right now, and I think it might be one of the best books I've read in a very, very long time. So, Red Rising and Expanse, I would highly recommend. Any plans to do some Major League clips? You get to look at women as an EVAP lore classic. That was one of the first episode or one of the first clips I uploaded to the channel. Just gotta scroll, or just sort by oldest. It's one of the first ones down there. Wolf, I went ahead and gave it a thumbs up. Don't make me regret it, buddy. Give what a thumbs up? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember who everyone's name is in the chat. Oh my fucking god, die! Yeah, Red Rising loses a lot of people in the first book. Yeah, the first book is so... I feel like it's... It's almost like not even the same series after the first book. The first book is essential to understanding a lot of things. But, like, when I think of Red Rising and I think of the things that happen in that series, the only memories I have of the first book are really, like, the first couple of chapters. And then after that, it's basically just not real. I mean, it's not that it's not relevant. It's more that um, the things that happen afterward are so much more poignant and emotionally evocative and powerful. So, it, luckily, the first book is also pretty easy and... Uh, short to get through, so if you can get through the first book, I promise you, books two onward are fucking amazing. Book five in particular is extremely fucking good. I will be right back in just a moment. All right, back again. You're not throwing up again, right? No, I'm not throwing up again. I still do have a bit of a cold, so I was blowing my nose. But no, no throwing up. 
most of the ailments in Liza P were AIDS. Ailments. I might not have engaged with that aspect of the mechanics at all. I'm not sure. Dead Island over Dying Light. Evil Within 2 over Evil Within 1. Somehow the second take is more controversial. Oh, did you see Mahler and Metal play through the Gears games? I did not see them play through the Gears games. Um, I haven't played Dead Island. I played a little bit of Dying Light, but not a lot. But I agree with Evil Within 2 being way better than Evil Within 1. Have you watched Firefly? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Oh my god, I love Firefly. So fucking good. Uh, <laughs> Serenity kind of broke me for a little bit. Oh, it's so good. Have you watched... Or, sorry, I already did that one. Hey, Wolf, out of curiosity, does the I Hate Everything debate still exist, or is it lost media? Oh, I haven't had that in years. I mean, fuck, I haven't had that. I got rid of that before I left YouTube. No, that's lost a time. And, you know, it would be a very, very bad idea to release that now. After, you know, everything that's happened. I'm not looking to cause drama or anything. So, no. No, I do not have that anymore. I haven't had it in a very long time. The Hunger Games, but better? Impossible. A turd polished is still a turd. So what I mean by that is, like, Red Rising is a very similar... The first book, that is. Not the other ones. It has a very similar concept, but it has a better in-universe explanation for why they have that kind of thing going on. And it means something in the rest of the series going forward. Um, it's part of the world building, but the rest of the story is uh, much, much different after the first book. Glad to hear from you again, Wolf. Do you know any good examples of a book where either the characters, world building, or prose are shit, but the other two are so good that it's worth reading anyway? Hmm. <laughs> are the characters, world building, or prose are shit? Well, <laughs> I can name you one where two of those are true. Where the characters and pros are shit, and that's uh, the Mistborn trilogy. Uh, I like the world, though. The world was metal as fuck. Ah, uh, that's a really difficult one. I don't know, I usually have pretty good luck with books over any other kinds of media, so I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Have you seen Only Fools and Horses? Highly recommend if not. I have not heard of it. Oh, shit. By the way, if you haven't read them, Jim Butcher is excellent, both the Dresden Files and Codex Alera. Dresden Files is literally my favorite book series ever. Nothing, <laughs> nothing even comes a little bit close. No, that's not true. There are some things that come a little bit close, but... Um... Yeah, Dresden Files, I was obsessed with. When I first started reading those, I, I got through all 17 books and both short story collections and all the comics in the span of two months. I was fucking unbelievably obsessed with those books. I'm going to be going through all the audiobooks again this year. Very, 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 very good. The first two books are rough. The second book is arguably the worst, but luckily those first... A lot of the books are extremely short and easy to get through. Would highly recommend The Dresden Files. I've read the first Codex Alera book. I have all the rest, I just haven't gotten to them yet. I also have the first Cinder Spires book, but I haven't read that either. Oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. 
Get in there. There we go. Have you read Jim Butcher's Codex Alara then? Uh, yeah, again, uh, first book. Um, I haven't read the others yet. I am interested in that, only because people say it's got like one of the best fantasy romances in there. I'm a sucker for a good romance in anything, so... Interested. I have it. Uh, read the first book. I enjoyed it. It wasn't amazing by any means, but... I feel like Jim has kind of a rough time beginning a story, but once he gets into it, it really fucking takes off. Right, giant snake area. Once I get out of here, I'll go back and look at those super chats that I missed. Chuck Tingle writes the best romance novels. Okay, I can't disagree with that. My issue with romance is my view on romance in a story is that it's best used as a through line accompaniment rather than the overall focus of the story. So I'm a, I'm a dude, so. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't really like just strict romances. But as I understand it, that's not how Codex Alera is, so. kind of embarrassed that I never read a proper book. Really? It's not that I'm illiterate, it's just that I could never keep reading without getting bored and I just kind of preferred visual media. You never read a book before? I'm not sure if I even believe you. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible. Like, even in school? YouTube shows Skyrim for the stream. Yeah, you know, this is just a very complex Skyrim mod. Maybe if Skyrim released like this back in the day, it would be considered a better game. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Okay. Did you read any of the Star Wars Legends books? Or maybe they weren't too interesting? I read some of them. I have a controversial opinion in thinking that most of Star Wars Legends actually kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, I didn't like anything from the Yuuzhan Vong books. Um, fucking, you remember Death Troopers, that time that uh, some Star Wars author decided it would be a good idea to just brazenly rip off Dead Space and do it really, really badly? <laughs> I thought that the way they killed Chewbacca was dog shit. I thought uh, the whole Palpatine clones thing was dog shit. I thought that Luke turning to the dark side briefly was dog shit. It was just... It, it was really, in a lot of ways, 
not that different from what we've been getting from Star Wars now. It was just mixed in with things that were kind of good. Because I remember liking the X-Wing books quite a bit. Um, I didn't read the sequels to Heir of the Empire. But I did like Heir of the Empire, or at least I did as a kid. It's a, been a really, really long time since I've actually read that, though. And I remember there being some, like, weird tism with, like, Thrawn. He, he like, fucking... He would study the art of his enemies to defeat them. Maybe I'm misremembering, because it's been a long time. But I thought that was fucking stupid. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely have the controversial opinion of thinking that Star Wars Legends is uh, overhyped and not really that good. But I did like this, the X-Wing books. Like, those were some of my favorite books as a kid. To broaden my last question, do you know any shows or series where either the characters, world building, or presentation are shit, but the other two are good enough to make them worth watching? Huh. Okay, characters, world building, presentation. God, I don't know. <laughs> Usually, usually the good stuff that's worth watching nails all three of those. <laughs> I'm not really sure I have an answer to that. I wish I had a better answer for you, but I, don't really, I can't really think of anything. Ever listen to Black Dahlia Murder? Great band, and they're from Detroit. Sent this earlier, not sure if I got missed. Uh, I heard of them. They're on my list of many bands I have to listen to. Um, I think I've heard a couple songs from them that I liked. Uh, but yeah, I do know of them. A friend of mine actually, uh, when they were starting out, um, knew them or he at least he. I think he said he drank with one of like the guitarists at a, a bar at some point. Which is pretty neat. Harry Potter? You see, I don't think Harry Potter is worth uh, watching or reading. So, I don't know. Uh, it's going to it's gonna have like an air of subjectivity to it, too. A great amount of EU Star Wars is quite ass with only a few good books here and there. It's just the amount of shit Disney has makes them look masterful by comparison. Yeah, probably. Because, like, I don't think... I mean, I, I guess the guys say Andor is good. I have I didn't watch it. I'm not going to. But it seems like Disney's only been able to make, like, one good thing. Whereas, like, the old Star Wars Legends has had, like, a hundred bad things. But, like, at least a few good things. So, I don't know. Both versions of Thrawn suffer from the issue of a writer trying to write a character much, much smarter than them. Yeah, maybe. I, like I said, I read Heir to the Empire when I was like maybe eight or nine, I think. Uh, so I don't remember it all that well, and I didn't read the sequels. Death Troopers isn't a Dead Space ripoff. It's literally lab mad goo that infects any species, starts stupid, then grows his hive mind and learns how to use tools and ships. It's just nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a loose Dead Space knock off it like it's a similar concept right but just not at all good <laughs> okay hold on a quick moment let me pull up super chats and I will hunt down those ones that I missed at the beginning of the stream I hope that it distinguishes oh yeah okay cool it does Do, 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 do. Where's chat? There we go. And wait, just a quick moment. I'll be right back.
right. Let's check out these super chats, make sure I didn't forget any. I mean, I know I did, but you know. Watch any good movie. Right. Hold on, let me pull up my Amazon list so that I can remember which movies I did see. Question being, have you watched any good movies recently? Yes, I have. Some classics that I just never got around to and uh, some new ones. Uh, Goodfellas. Re uh, recently watched that. Very, very good movie. Same with Seven Psychopaths. The original RoboCop. I had only... And Total Recall. I had seen the remakes for RoboCop and Total Recall, and they both fucking sucked. The originals? Oh, so good. Uh, nobody. I really liked that. It was like John Wick, but starring someone who can actually act. Smiling Friends. Very, very good. <laughs> Funny as shit. I loved it. Uh, Walk Hard. A Dewey Cox story. That's starring uh, uh, John C. Riley. That shit's fucking hysterical. I love it. Xavier Renegade Angel. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. You just gotta watch it and... Uh, just deal with it. <laughs> just just watch. It's so good. Uh, Black Sails. I was deeply impressed with that show. I loved it. Uh, it's, a, it's a prequel to Treasure Island. It has potentially one of my favorite characters in all of fiction in there. Highly recommend it. And it has, uh, Bear McCreary did the music and he made like one of the best TV themes I've ever heard. Uh, Firefly and Serenity, loved both of them. The Whale, really, really good. Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, it was kind of yes and no. Good and also a little bit cringe. Mostly good. Party Down. Uh, pretty funny. I'm a little iffy on season three, but I mean, I guess we're getting into season four, so I'm happy about that. Uh, Primal. Primal is interesting. It's, it's got really awesome animation. Its world makes absolutely no fucking sense at all. I, I don't you know. I don't know what they were doing with that. It's fun, but you know. Who's your favorite in Black Sails? Oh, Captain Flint. I mean, he's the one that I'm talking about when I say he's one of my favorite characters in fiction, potentially. Very, very well-written character. Uh, oh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Fantastic. The original Scream, really good. Team America World Police, <laughs> funny as hell. I think that might be it. Oh, um, what's that new Scorsese movie? Oh, I should know this. I just fucking watched it. Well, not just watched it. I saw it in theaters. Uh, God, help me out. What was it? Fuck. Why am I asking? I'm on Google. New Scorsese movie. Killers of the Flower Moon. I really liked that one. I don't feel like it needed to be three and a half hours. I feel like... I mean... I think you could have cut it down to like three. But for the most part, I think most of that movie's runtime was justified. It was uh, pretty dense with the amount of plots going on and the characters and the people who were involved. So I understand why it had to be lengthy. I don't feel like it really needed to be three and a half hours, but I really liked it. Swiss Army Man. That was... I don't know. That was an interesting movie. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Another really, really, really good one. I think that may be it. Oh, I got into Always Sunny. <laughs> I fucking love that show. Uh, the Dune movies, I enjoyed them. The Witch, really good. The Lighthouse, really good. The Northman, really, really good. Uh, True Detective Season 1, I fucking loved. 
No Country for Old Men. Finally got around to watching that, too. Excellent movie. Oh, uh, The Dark Crystal Show. Uh, incredibly underrated fantasy. It's got some tism, granted, but I really enjoyed it. Phenomenal soundtrack, too. Um, the attention to detail with all the puppetry and environments was so fucking cool. Highly recommend it. You have four levels, by the way, and thanks for the highlights. You're welcome. Sometimes they get uppity and you have to put them in their place. Hiya, I'm putting you out to work the fields. What do you call these wind monkeys? Wiggers? I caught this one staring at my mistress. Is that a quote from Killers of the Flower Moon? I don't remember. Or maybe that's just some random shit. I don't know. If you like action movies as a genre, I recommend the author Matthew Riley. Good page turners with excellent action and some interesting characters. Agree with Star Wars many flaws in later books. I may check that out. What kind of tism are we talking about? Uh, it's mostly like some things with the with the Skeksis. Like, on one hand, they are like kind of characterized as being really cowardly and like using machines and shit to do their bidding for them and kind of using a perceived level of uh, like a, the perception of a threat as opposed to a real threat to try and maintain control over other people. I feel like the show in some ways didn't really make them all that threatening. In, in other scenes they're really threatening. Like I remember this one where like there's this uh, traitor of the Gelflings, and then she just kind of, like, gets hit with this, like, oh, I am not actually welcome here. Uh, and she, uh, it's just, like, kind of a terrifying scene, as, like, all the Skeksis are surrounding her, being like, mm, no, nah, we're not gonna help you. We're kind of just gonna kill you. And it's, uh, it's really good. Um, Mark Hamill's character has a crazy fucking scene at the end of the show. Really, really good. Uh, I'm so sad that the show got fucking shit-canned by Netflix, because I would have killed for a second season. I'd still recommend it. it. If you can get past a little bit of tism, and it's not, like, nearly as bad as a lot of other shows and movies that come out now, but it, it was pretty fun. I really liked it. Maybe if we watch it enough, Netflix will be like, oh, hey, maybe people want to see this. Uh, oh no, Longeth is the big mad. Also, howdy, Hugh. I'll tell him that. You said howdy. Have you read a book called The Three-Body Problem? Uh, I know of it, but I haven't read it. Great to see you again, you massive Ewok. How did you like Dune Part 1 and 2? I think they rely too much on people doing their own research to understand the setting, but it's refreshing. Oh, right, yeah, so that was a two-parter super chat. On C, refreshing to see the care and creativity that has gone into them, especially with the Harkonnens homeworld and Cheers. I liked both of the Dune movies. They're, they're in, very enjoyable, but there is like a weird element of like, I feel like it's simultaneously like you need to kind of read the books to understand everything, but at the same time, there's going to be things in the movies that are really going to piss off book readers. It's a weird paradox. I enjoy them, but I would always recommend reading the book first. Uh, Cutscenes in video games suck. I know. I've been playing video games for 30 fucking years. Blessed be the dawn and begidious. <laughs> Thank you. Grimnack. I'm, I'm sure that's your real name and not Doomer. Hell yeah, it's time to prove it is complete in its incompleteness. To see the care and creativity... Oh, right. I've already seen that. Bacardi? Throw that shit out. We need Heradura. I've not heard of that. Senor Lobo, I took your advice and decided to start reading again. I ordered Bram Stoker's Dracula. Neat! Should arrive tomorrow, so I'll have the weekend to get into it. Thanks for suggesting it. Yeah, man. Oh, I wish I could reread Dracula for the first time. Ugh. So good. Explorer class. Best bonuses. Also, since you now drink, does that mean you stop smoking pot? Uh, yeah, I don't really smoke anymore. I don't really drink that often, to be fair. I mean, when I moved into my apartment, I bought a few bottles of, uh, I bought, like, 
two bottles of mead and a bottle of rum, and I still have those same bottles of mead and rum. So uh, it's very much like a special social occasion kind of thing. I was always afraid that I was never going to be able to handle it well because so many people in my family just fuck up their lives on on uh, on alcohol, unfortunately. So I didn't actually start drinking until I was fucking 25. But then when I did, it was like, oh, I mean, I like this, but, you know, it's not great. Hey, Wolf, you said you read Shad's book last stream, but did you happen to read Drinker's books by chance? Cheers. I read... Like, the first 50 pages of Drinker's first book. I wasn't impressed. It didn't capture my attention. Like, 50 pages is what I give most books. Um, sometimes I'll give it more. But, yeah, I, I just found it kind of like a boring, kind of not very good knockoff of uh, Tom Clancy. Granted... That's just his first book. As I understand it, he's written something like 10 or something. Um, so, I don't know. He, he, I would assume he got better. But I only read a little bit of the first book and I wasn't very impressed. Favorite Souls boss. Also, great to see you again. I loved your vids back in the day. Oh, favorite Souls boss. Jesus, that's a hard question. I really like Gearman from Bloodborne. He has a phenomenal soundtrack. And it's it's like kind of sad, like the scenario. Like, weirdly enough, you're both trying to save each other from each other's fate. It's just, it's like a really emotional scene. I know Orphan of Cause is technically like a, a much better boss, but Gearman is personally my favorite in that game. Um, huh. I really like the Abyss Watchers, but that's mostly because of the scenario and the music. Tokens of love for the wolf. Amazon added a ton of terrible fantasy movies from the 80s. It's been glorious. Oh, great. Hey, dude. Oh, I already read that one. All right, I think we're getting to the point where I caught up with a lot of these. I'm going to recommend a manga called Goodnight Pun Pun, but with a huge warning as it gets super depressing and real at point. All right, saw that one too. Shout out to a fellow Michigan lad. I'm in Nuego myself, but I grew up in GR. My grandparents lived in Nuego for a little bit, but there wasn't really much to do there, so they moved back. The highlight video is dropping right after Geeks and Gamers Daily is a top-notch way to start my morning. Keep up the great content. Thank you. Unfortunately, I work tonight, so I gotta sleep. Nonetheless, hope the plague pisses off and your night goes smoothly, my good massive. Thank you. Wolf, check out the Black Dahlia Murder if you haven't yet. Really cool melodic death metal band. Plus, they're from Detroit. Yes, I will do so. Eventually, at some point. Dark Souls 2, stuttering of the first cringe. Hi, Wolf, can you nudge Mooper into playing Prey? Oh, right, we talked about that. You don't have Dishonored 2? I have yet to finish Dishonored 1. <laughs> I played the game DSC and Callisto to completion multiple times. They give me PTSD. The DLC for Callisto is so bad. System Shock remake was great. I still have to play the original System Shocks. Gollum won the argument. Is 3 for 3 your personal 666? 666? I know it's mine. Yeah, I kind of hate that number. <laughs> the real challenge is to convince Fringy to play Prey. Apparently he blames the studio instead of Bethesda Zenimax for the death of the OG series. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't blame the devs for that. I really like the uh, 2017 Prey, though. Hey, Wolf, can you please tell me... Oh, right. I don't know Fringy's opinion on Spider-Verse. Hope you've been well. Let's see. I th yeah, I think we caught up with most of these.
All right, just gonna refresh to make sure I really didn't get, or I really didn't miss any more. Yep, looks like we're caught up. Excellent. I did get a message. Ah, I think you guys will be interested in this. Well, hold on, let me check it to make sure. Oh, uh, okay. It's not live live yet. Right, so I have been talking with Kibikins about the recommended page on the EFAP movies, or EFAP movies, on the EFAP.me site. And I gave him a whole big list of, like, new books, like, books to take off that list, books to add, grouping it by series and by standalones. I also added a bunch of music to recommend. Yeah, it looks like this is all pretty solid. All right, I will show you guys this. Oh, can I show? Oh yeah, hold on. It's just gonna be a little blank for a moment. There we go. Yeah, so this is not uh, live yet, but this is what it's gonna look like. No longer Wolf's Recommended Reading, it's Wolf's Recommended. So, here in Fantasy, we have A Song of Ice and Fire, His Dark Materials, The Dark Tower, The Dresden Files, First Law, Lycanius, The Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, The Witcher, and Wings of War for my fantasy series. Science fiction series, Dune, Red Rising, The Expanse, Metro Trilogy. I will say, the Dune Trilogy, um, potentially... Oh, good. oh, sweet! Oh, that's cool, I didn't even... Think you would do that? Oh, that's awesome, Kibikins. You're fucking cool as shit. Yeah, so you can like see what I recommend, and it takes you to links to all of them, or at least to their Goodreads page, which is pretty good. Yeah, science fiction. We got all these, and then these are the standalone books, things that I couldn't really categorize with the series. So we got Dracula. Oh. <laughs> That's interesting. Fight Club has the wrong co <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to just fix that one up. But yeah, Fight Club by uh, the book, that is. Really, really good book. I would highly recommend it. Future, It, Roadside Picnic, The Doomed City, The Martian, Treasure Island, The Terror, The Stand, The Shining, and Dr. Sleep, The Road by Cormac McCarthy, The Revenant, if you guys didn't like the movie, and I totally understand if you didn't, the book is very different from the movie. I actually prefer the book. Very, very fun. And then we have our comics and manga here. And here we have music. We have folk. And I'll say this. I grouped these very loosely. So not all of them are going to be in, like, the super hyper-specific... Um, genre or subgenres that you would generally find them in but i didn't want there to be like a whole like say folk and then there'd be like one album there you know so some of this is going to be kind of uh loosely grouped but it it's like a general vibe kind of thing so for like folk metal we got elevati high lung the who vordrana and these are these are the albums that I would recommend starting with because they're my personal favorites. Uh, they're not going to be everyone's personal go-tos on, you know, every single one. Like, uh, I know this will probably be pretty contentious. Recommending At the Edge of Time instead of Nightfall in Middle Earth. I really love Nightfall in Middle Earth. However, I love At the Edge of Time a lot more and I think it's a bit more accessible to normal people. <laughs> normal people. The general person looking. So that's why I recommend this before Nightfall in Middle-Earth. It doesn't mean I dislike Nightfall in Middle-Earth at all. I love it. But, you know, that's just my thought process here. So prog metal, we got Mastodon, Opeth, Tool. Power metal, we got Ailstorm, Avantasia, Beast in Black, Blind Guardian, Glory Hammer, Wind and Rose, Unleash the Archers, Sabaton, Powerwolf, Ordenogan. I think it's missing a couple. We'll have to add those. 
Gojira, Marilyn Manson, Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne, Bleed from Within, from Within, Within, and it's okay. And Hell Filed With, Brand of Sacrifice, Lorna Shore, Shadow of Intent, Seer, Harakiri for the Sky, Black Braid, Oithen, 1914, Amana Marth, Bellacore, Cannibal Corpse, Death, Dusk Morn, Winter Sun, The Halo Effect, Necro Goblicon, A Pale Horse Named Death, Typo Negative, Solstice Theater, and Agalok. Now, I will say, these are also not all of the bands that I listen to. You may notice, like, I don't have things like Queen on here even though I love Queen. But I'm also not super familiar with Queen's entire discography to make a to make a uh, list, or make a determination, I should say, of which album I would recommend people go to first. So I need to just, like, experience that more. However, so there are a lot of bands on here that I listen to that I just... I need to do more of a deep dive before I know exactly what to recommend to people. However, this is a pretty good starter list for a lot of the metal that I listen to that I think people will find pretty nice. And yeah, I'll contact Cubicans about fixing this one up. And there, there are a couple bands on here that I noticed are not on here yet. And we'll just figure that out. However, this is what it's generally going to look like soon. And you'll be able to see my recommended books, comics, music, and every so often I'll keep Cubicans updated so he can add some new stuff afterward. But good stuff. Good, good stuff. All right, looks like a few more Super Chats came in. I'll just update that real quick and I will answer those. Have you listened to Blind Guardian's Nightfall? Well... <laughs> There we go. Nightfall and Middle Earth album. It's fucking phenomenal. Yes, I really, really like it. It's one of the uh, the few adaptations of Tolkien's work that I think is genuinely excellent. Warhammer 40k book recommendation. Infinite and Divine. So I don't know anything about Warhammer 40k. Is it, are these books like... Do I need to know things about the games? Or... Or do I need any extra context to know anything about it going in? Love to see you back, Wold. Wold? Who is this Wold? You have been missed. Thank you. Hey, Wolf, I missed you. Glad to see you're back-ish. Favorite movie of 2023. Mine was Anatomy of a Fall. Shit, I don't know what movies came out in 2023 specifically. Let me see. Killers of the Flower Moon was 2023? I thought that was 2024. Hey, maybe. I don't know. The Whale came out last year, didn't it? Or no, that was the year before. Oh, I liked The Killer a lot. Killers of the Flower Moon I liked a lot. I swear that wasn't a 2023 movie. Is it really? I haven't watched a lot of these. Most of them. D -d 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 yeah, I don't know. The Jester. I haven't even heard of that. Hmm. Well, if Killers of the Flower Moon is a 2023 movie, I would say that is potentially my favorite. With the killer being up there as well. God, I hate how Google sorts these things now. It used to be a lot easier to sift through. Now, now you got like 16 different rows of loose genre categories. Some of which have movies that are also in other genre categories. Huh. Yeah, potentially Killers of the Flower Moon or The Killer. Oh shit, I didn't mean to close that. Wolf. <laughs> he could have just he didn't have to super chat that, but <laughs> thank you anyway. Oh also, any chance you'll be on EFAP again? Probably not.
Oh, okay, let's move chat back into place. 2024 is only three months. Yeah. Yeah, damn. Dude, my perception of time is so... Oh, shit, my controller's turned off. Is so fucked. I don't remember when anything happened anywhere. Did you ever read the Metro 2033 graphic novel Dimitri put out called The Outpost America came back... Came out in 2016. I did. I was a little disappointed that... It never made it past that first issue, though. So it's not... Unfortunately, it's something I can't recommend because the story is totally incomplete. I was interested in it. There were some cool concepts, but... Uh, yeah, the fact that it never got a second issue... Ugh. Unfortunate. Videos and wikis are fine and all, but going straight to the source is usually best. For 40k, it's whatever the most recent edition rulebook is. Hmm. Ah, you see, having to read a rule book to understand a book is kind of a turnoff for me. We'll never forgive 343 for what they did to Halo. Such a strong foundation for better stories destroyed by incompetence, boarding on malice, also destroying the brand reputation. Yeah, I mean, I'm at a point where it's like, I just don't even fucking care about Halo anymore. It sucks. We're talking about a series that used to be my favorite game for like most of my life. And then they just ruined it. I can't believe that people like, uh, I know that Actman said he thought that like the story of the three games as a whole was like a 6 out of 10. And it's like, no, I would consider it like very nearly, I would say it's just as bad, at least, as the sequel trilogy. It's fucking horrible. I can't believe that they, they took Cortana, the greatest fucking female character in video games, and just, like, they turned her into a villain, and her whole thing in Infinite is that she kills herself because she feels bad about being a bad guy. And she does this off-screen. And then they replace her with a different version of Cortana. And then they undo every fucking thing from all of the previous games. Like, nothing in any of 343's games fucking matter. They retcon everything as they do it. Halo 5 is a retcon of Halo 4. Uh... Halo Escalation, that comic, is a retcon of Halo 4 Spartan Ops. Halo Infinite is a retcon of Halo 5. And then Halo Infinite is really a retcon of everything they've done. Because the ending of Halo Infinite literally just sets everything back to the exact same point it was at the end of Halo 3. Literally everything that they did in the, like, 13 years that 343 has been in charge of the franchise was done to just retcon everything and reset the board back to fucking Halo 3. Like, cool. I'm glad I wasted my fucking time. I'm glad that you took the best female character in gaming and turned her into a suicidal retard who got mad that, like, Chief didn't want to, like, fuck her at some point. It's so shit. It's so awful. It, like, uh... Literally, the, the one thing that almost convinced me to come back to YouTube was to make like a gigantic video annihilating Halo Infinite because in some ways I think it's actually the worst game that 343 has put out and in some ways it's the best it's it's weird because like in gameplay in terms of gameplay they made massive strides that have uh, actually improved upon things that Bungie did but narratively it was hideous it was the worst open world game I've played in a very long time. Totally fucking empty and devoid of anything interesting. The story was basically worthless. They just undo everything constantly. I hate it. I, I despise that game. Which is weird because I also have like 250 hours logged in. Because I, I, I do like the multiplayer. Ugh. But the story, like, the story is the reason why I play Halo, and they ruined it. It sucks. 
you took this thing I love and you you ruined it forever. Thanks, 343. You horrible, worthless, dog shit, brain dead, fucking talentless hat company. The fact that Bonnie Ross finally got fired is great. However, uh, you have Kiki Wolfkill and Retard O'Connor still working there. As long as those two are there, nothing will ever fucking change. I hate everything about all the Halo games that came out after Reach. Ugh. Sorry for the rant. I, I needed to get that off my chest. I hate... I hate. <laughs> have you ever played Arcane's Prey 2017? How would you have made a sequel to Halo 3 if you had to? It's great to hear your voice again, no homo. I don't want a sequel to Halo 3. I want it to just end. Halo 3 had a perfect ending. If I was to continue making Halo games after that, I would want them to be in the same vein as Reach and ODST. Just do new things. Because, like, the one of the biggest issues with fucking 343 is their stupid fucking idea that Chief is, like, a superhero. This idea that he's, like, more important than he actually is. Not to say that Chief isn't important. Not to say that the things he does in the original trilogy aren't, like, massively influential to the story of the series. But, like, the whole point is that Chief is just another soldier. But they... Just a lucky one, you know? It, it outright says, like, his number one thing is he's just lucky, which is great. Because it means that there's camaraderie in all of these, uh, all the games, and all the original games, anyway. That's something that 343 really lost track of. Like, the fucking UNSC basically is completely personality-less uh, after Reach. Because, like, I can remember so many instances in the original games where, even all the way up until, uh, through Halo Reach, where, you know, you're, you're with your bros with the army, you know? Like, the, the UNSC troops that fight alongside you, it feels like, uh, a group, like you're a part of a larger whole. But then Halo 4 comes along and it's like, no, th uh, Master Chief is actually the most important. He's like a, a superhero who was chosen by some fucking forerunner god to do a thing. It, ugh, I hate it. And, you know, it sucks because there are some good things in Infinite. Like that scene where the pilot, like, breaks down and he admits to the fact that he wasn't a pilot in the first place. He was just a civilian contractor who stole the ship because he was afraid and... Master Chief had that moment where he was like, I failed to do this, this, and that, but I'm not going to fail you. Like, that's a genuinely excellent scene. It's moving. I love it. I wish that it wasn't in that otherwise horrible pile of shit game, though. I, I, I love how in the fucking final battle against uh, not Atriox, the other one, Master Chief kills him, and he's like, he was just a soldier trying to do trying to follow orders and it's like what follow what orders he's the guy giving the orders you stupid fucking game you forgot that you already killed atriox atriox is such a worthless villain he was he had more screen time in the halo wars 2 trailers than he did in halo wars 2 and then he's barely in halo 5 he's fucking dead he's and then he there's time travel now you have the fucking... They fucked up the Forerunners so bad that they can't use that anymore, so they had to come up with a new alien race that's even worse than the Forerunners. And it's called the Harbinger, who's part of the Endless. Like, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that we're just not even pretending to have original naming conventions now. It's so lame. It's so shit. You replace the buggers for enemies that are basically just buggers again you have like four different emp guns in the game which makes vehicular combat like just a horrible chore trying to fly around the halo ring is a nightmare when you have every fucking grunt carrying like an emp pistol you got rid of lasky you got rid of infinity with no i mean, i hate infinity infinity was a horrible mistake it was a giant problem since the instant they introduced it. But then they just 
They're like, oh, we got <laughs> the brutes got even worse ships now. And it's like, great, you you invented another fucking problem. Thanks, three four three. You fucking brainlet. You brainlet idiots. Let's just play a good game here that doesn't suck like everything made by 343. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't rant about this forever. Otherwise, we literally will be here for another, like, 15 hours. Just me ranting about how much Halo fucking sucks. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm gonna die here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna die here. Once I found out that you could, like, parry this guy's attacks, he, like, changed everything for me. There we go. I still feel like I'm going to die here, but... Maybe not. I don't know, I'm not very confident with Souls games. Especially not this one. What the fuck? Horse got some hops. All right, come on. There we go. Cool. Oh. If I actually manage to kill this guy. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. I knew something like that was going to happen. Oh, I'm totally dead. Ah, uh, too far away. Oop. Ah, uh, oh shit. Ah, uh, yep. There we go. Ah, oh, well. That was a lot better than I thought it was gonna do. I usually die like 84 fucking times before I finally kill this boss. Let's give this another go. My name is Kyobu Masataka! die, brat! I love how much fucking energy that voice actor put into that whole MY NAME! I would try and do the same thing, but my fucking voice is still fucked from that cold. Didn't mean to do that, but that works. Dying is kind of gay. That is pretty gay. Can you think of a gay guy who has not died? I can't. Aside from the ones that are still living. So until the gays can master death... Uh, dying is kind of gay, I guess. 
All right. Oh, shit. There we go. Hell yeah. Went a lot better this time. Where'd he go? There we go. Gord. Ah, what the fuck? I pressed LT. It would be a great game if you could do as I say. Oh, come on now. There we go. Hell yeah! There we go. Shinobi execution. I think that's the best I've ever done against that boss. Usually that's the one who kicks my ass and reminds me that I'm playing a difficult game. Gay actor Michael Douglas is an actor and cannot be trusted. True. Now eat the horse. I don't know if I want to do that. Is this a wolf gaming channel now? No. It is a wolf gaming channel only when I say it is a wolf gaming channel. Right now it is. After the stream is done, it will no longer be. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to do. What I love most about Sekiro is that you can re-fight bosses anytime. I wish Elden Ring would add that in its DLC. Yeah, I wish every game did that, frankly. That was something I really liked about uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. You could do that too. You could, uh, I mean, it was framed under more of a challenge mode, but you could still fight them in exactly the same way. Because I love the boss fights in Elden, in Elden Ring, in Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Especially Mora getting back to go fight her over and over again. Great. Ooh. Pizza soon. You guys know me, I need my pizza. Let me make sure. Because I know a few Super Jazz came in. I want to make sure I didn't miss any of those. Oh, I definitely did. Have you ever played Arcane's Prey 2017? How would you have made it? Oh, right. We already did that one. Yes, I did play Prey. Ackman sold out to mobile gotcha games. Meanwhile, he argued microtransactions ruined Halo, so his opinions on gaming is kind of flaky, IMO. Uh, I wouldn't know. I haven't watched Ackman's content in a while, but, uh, you know, I've always felt he was a little bit too nice with, uh, with Halo in general. Or 343's Halo, anyway. All of them, really. I feel like all that big Halo YouTubers just don't criticize those games like they should be it's unfortunate but you know whatever i'd recommend anamorphoses under the red cloud or elegy knee knee obliviscaris's exile zivia's 
Rouge Nouge. Oh, oh, these are bands. I have heard uh, Rouge Nouge. Um, <laughs> what are the fucking names of those songs? They're so complicated. Uh, one of them starts with a U. It's like Ooze Nazi or something. <laughs> Who's Nazi? That, no, that's not what it's called. I know it starts with a U Z, but I don't remember what you know it goes. I really, really like that stuff though. Halloween's Rabbit Don't Come Easy. I Halloween is on my list. Uh Shimmel Gognar's Transients. Uh I've listened to a couple songs from Shimmel Gognar. I really like them. And Sonata Artica's Reckoning Night. That's another one on my list. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can, like, sell anything. Well, I never fucking use these, so I'm going to do that. Oh, I have fucking coin purses that I can use. Let's do that. Oh, you know, this is another thing that they can fix. I'd like to be able to just, like, group all the money together and do it all at once. Or souls, depending on the game. Rather than constantly have to go back into the same menu over and over and over again. Weirdly enough, that the only game that did it right was fucking Dark Souls 2. I don't get it. Shouldn't be that difficult. Pac-Man <laughs> stabbed Mauler in the back by releasing private DMs between him and Mauler just to dunk on ads, which failed. I heard about that, yeah. Disappointing. I mean, I doubt that he meant to, at least from what I know of him, and, you know, maybe I got a bad read on him, but from all the times I've talked with him, I doubt that he released those DMs from Mauler with any malintent toward Mauler, but it's still an incredibly reckless and irresponsible thing to do. I guess it's hard for me to talk because I've done the same thing. And I mean, it's not a good thing to do, but, you know, pot calling the kettle black and all that. But will you put pineapple on that pizza? Why the fuck would I do that, you monster? Better memories of Halo. The setting has my favorite ship names ever. Pillar of Autumn. The Big Stick. Is that really one of the names of the ships? Say my name, Forward Under Dawn, Armageddon's Edge, two for flinching. Oh, yeah. The ship names used to be so cool. Infinity is such a generic, shitty name. When you have fucking names like Shadow of Intent, names that are so cool that bands actually use them for their names. Just saying, you know, Shadow of Intent, really good band. Maybe you should listen to them. They were actually based on Halo for a while until the band realized that Halo sucked and stopped doing it. Isn't there a way to get up here? Oh, yeah. Hold on. There we go. Fleet of Particular Justice, yeah. Ugh. Oh, there were so many cool names. It was so unique in the fantasy, or fantasy, sci-fi setting. And they, uh, then 343 came in and they uh, ruined everything. It's great. I love to see my favorite video game ever get ruined by incompetent retards. Oh, we're doing it again. We're getting too lost in me shitting on Halo. Hello? Are you going to allow me to pick up the thing? There we go. Prayer bead. I know those do something. I'm completely forgetting what they do. Hold on, let me... Offering four of them and a Sculptor's Idol will increase maximum vitality and posture. Sweet. Oh, sweet, I have four of them. Excellent. 
can go do that right now, and then I'll go back to get my flask replenished. What do I think of Yap Yap the Destroyer? Is that the one from Halo 5? I don't remember. To be fair, there's a lot to shit on. Well, yeah, there's like 13 years of 343 ruining my favorite game to shit on. Okay. Uh, how do I use my prayer beads? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, we we'll go back over here and get my shit back. Any other favorite deathcore bands? Yeah, I uh, I I know that a lot of people kind of meme on them because they're not as good as other deathcore bands, but I do like Lorna Shore quite a bit. Their latest album is really really good. Um, Brand of Sacrifice is another one, and and a hell. It's called and hell followed with, which is a little bit weird to say aloud but yeah i'm not super into deathcore yet i'm just kind of getting started in my deathcore journey if you will but those are the ones that i really like so far feel free to shit on halo every time i get started on it i'm told i'm being too negative well you know maybe they should make better games if they don't want people to be too negative ugh <sighs> Poor Halo. Halo was so revolutionary, it changed how every single first-person shooter worked on consoles. And then this fucking team of incompetents come in, and they ruin everything. I love how people are always like, Oh, you know, you should give some credit to um, the dev... The devs at 343, it's just the management that's the problem. And it's like, is it really, though? Some of the problems were definitely not caused by fucking management. Granted, a lot of them were caused by management. However, a lot of them were definitely caused by the devs just not knowing what to do. Like, the fact that they have never been able to get theater mode to work. The fact that their netcode has always fucking sucked. The fact that they... Uh, always have, um, issues with bullet registration. They, they keep saying that they can't figure out how to do basic things like split screen when people can accidentally mod their way into it. They keep saying that, uh, God, so many things. Fucking Call of Duty still has, well, I don't know if it still does. It's been a while since I played Call of Duty. But I remember Call of Duty having split screen in Black Ops 3, at least. And that was on PC. If fucking Treyarch can figure out how to do it, why can't 343? God, I hate these little things. Great to talk. Because that's exactly what I want to deal with. Fucking dog enemies. deal with this for now because it's a fucking side quest. What the fuck? 
What? Oh, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Just joined the stream to see people shitting on 343, and thank you all for making my day. Hey man, I love to shit on 343. It's the one thing that brings me joy in life. Wanted to mention, the Cortana thing annoys me more because Halo was one of the only series where AI were unironically good and trusted, but now they're just evil sometimes. Yeah, like, that's the thing. I liked it that it wasn't just doing Skynet again, right? Because that's what everything does with them. And having the AI in Halo be clones of the brains of humans, so, like, they are effectively just human computers. I mean, in the same way that Mentats are in, um, in Dune. It was, it was unique, it was original. And just overall, Cortana was a really fucking good character. But then Brian Reed comes along. I'm so glad that fucking worthless hack writer, uh, had to go into hiding and has never been heard from again after Halo 5. Like, I, I know it's mean, but, like, seriously, I if I meet Brian Reed, I want to tell him that I think the world would be better off if he just left it. He ruined everything. Okay. No. Come on, Wolf, that's mean. Don't do that. No, don't cross that line. I am glad that he has basically been blacklisted from every industry, though, and he can't write anything anymore. Okay. Come on. I, I seriously despise these fucking enemies. Come on, you fucker. Oh my god, another fucking dog! Miyazaki! Stop with the dogs! Stop with the dogs, please. And for that matter, stop with the fucking bird- oh, come on. Birds and mosquito enemies. You know, the ones that fly way too fast and too erratically to possibly actually hit them. Maybe just never do that again. That's the thing. I love Miyazaki and I also hate him. There we go. Finally. Now I can go back and tell him that I killed the rats. Okay. Wanted to mention- oh right, I already read that. 343 is the public toilet of the games industry. Pretty much. Sekiro, shadows die twice, maybe thrice, and sometimes even four times. Like you could have had a really interesting story about the morality of both cloning and that specific brand of AI. Well, they could have done something interesting with the Forerunners, too, but they decided not to do that. They can't do that, unfortunately, because they're not very good at writing. <sighs> Whose brilliant idea was it to... Oh, what? Unable to process the order with the store? What do you mean? I was looking forward to that pizza. 
Are they not open today? Hold on. It says they're open. It's not like it's a holiday or anything. Wolf, have you played the Metal Gear Solid games? I have not yet, no. I know there's like a really shitty remaster of the first three. I mean, I'll still probably pick it up, because otherwise there's not really any other feasible way to play them. You should check out Matha Shesman's From Soft Games animation parodies. Hmm. Interesting. Haven't heard of them. Sekiro pizza orders canceled twice. That actually irritates me quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I scheduled it ahead so that I'd have it by now. Well, fine. I guess I'll just fucking order it again, then. That's dumb. Dumb. Lame. Gay. Alright, where are their drinks? Beverages. Right, I guess we'll see if this one goes through. I need my pizza. All right, I'll keep the app open now. See if it gets canceled again. Better not be. Pizza cooked. <laughs> Don't forget your Baja Blast. I'm not ordering from Taco Bell. Does Taco Bell order or deliver pizza now? I've never actually had a Baja Blast. I always assumed they'd be shit. But I also just don't like Taco Bell in general. First it's 343, three, now it's Domino's. Domino's? No. Domino's sucks. What in the actual fuck? Strongest NPC alive, holy shit. Baja Blast is widely available now? Outside of Taco Bell? That's weird. Halo 4 and Infinite has some nice story moments about it. Never played Halo 2... Never play Halo 2 Anniversary. Well, you know what's funny about Halo 2 Anniversary is they took out the Halo 5 cutscenes because they're so embarrassed by Halo 5 that they're just like, oh, let's pretend it didn't happen. My black pill, Forerunners should have been humans so advanced they're alien to modern humans. It'd work. Well, that's what the original lore was. Fucking 343 Guilty Spark outright says it in Halo 3. Like, humans are Forerunners. This isn't conjecture based on the original ending of Halo 2. That's just what humans used to be. But then 343, because they aren't good at anything, including paying basic attention to the lore of the story that they are fucking writing for, decided to make them their own ugly fucking Nosferatu knockoff aliens. Never expected Pointing Guy, of all people, to have a villain arc. Kind of love it. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty amusing. Not gonna lie. Yeah, because, like, in Halo 4, they retconned it so that Forerunners were different from humans, which is dumb, because the reason that humans could interact with Forerunner technology in the first place is because... Humans were forerunners. The reason the Covenant couldn't do it is because the Covenant weren't forerunners. Humans were. 
But then they changed that, so now it's just like, I don't know, I guess humans can interact with it for some fucking reason. And then they made it so that, like, the humans were actually at war with the Forerunners forever ago, and that they were... the that they, they were... God, it's so dumb. They came up with this idea where they were like, alright, so there were the Forerunners, and then there were the Primordial. Or... Were the prim what were they called? Primordiums or primordial? Something like that. And it's like, it, you understand, those two words mean the fucking exact same thing, right? Like, why? Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard for them to write? You didn't have to make it that unoriginal and shitty. But you did anyway. Oh shit. You know, I remember when the first season of the Halo show came out, and I, I watched the first episode with the guys, and we were all deeply offended. And I remember being asked, like, if I was going to watch the rest of the season, and I was like, no. No, I'm not going to watch the rest of the fucking Halo season one show. And I didn't. I watched the first episode. Uh, I watched the EFAP on that season. But <laughs> Wolf versus Boogie. <laughs> Bold of you to assume that Boogie can move that much. But yeah, I, I've dealt with Halo being raped for ten years. <laughs> I don't. I don't need more of it. My heart's broken enough. Can I not have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of peace? I can't do it anymore. I can't allow them to keep ruining the thing that I love and having to just deal with it. It's like hey or uh, like Star Wars now. Like people ask me like, "Oh, did you watch Mando? Did you watch Andor? Did you watch Ahsoka?" And it's like, "No, I'm not I'm not fucking watching any more Star Wars." Star Wars ended with Return of the Jedi and that's all I care about anymore. I don't have enough... Life's too fucking short to keep wasting it watching shit that I know I'm not going to like. I have seven unused levels. What do you mean? Oh! I forgot there was a fucking skill tree in the game. Huh? How do I use it? Does it make me better to have got it this far without using any of my levels? How do you fucking unlock them? What the hell? Oh, at an idol. Okay, that makes sense. Well, clearly I'm the best Sekiro player in the world that I've been able to do all this, and I don't even... I didn't even realize there was a ranking system. Oh, shit. Wizards. Synthetic wolf. Skewish you! Oh, shit. Yeah, it'd probably be good to go there anyway. I don't have enough health to take on the fucking bull. Now go the whole game. 
You know, if you guys didn't mention anything, I might literally have gone the whole game without leveling up. Okay. Let's level up. I love Halo Show having the emotion inhibitor chips be implanted just kind of under their skin and their neck where they can easily reach it. Oh, right. I forgot about that. It's the same thing that fucking Star Wars did and ruined the clones. You can buy Makiri now. <laughs> That's how you do it? Okay. Okay, here we go. Run and slide. What about this one? Okay, yeah, I remember this one being useful. Hmm. Acquires the combat art Ichimonji. Ichimonji delivers a heavy one hit over. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Let's do that. And then. Suppress patience. Or, no, suppress presence. Latent skill that reduces an enemy's ability to perceive those who are in stealth. Removing one's presence is part of what defines a shinobi. I think... I think we'll go with these first. All right. You have to find books that give you access to new skill trees. Gotcha. Am I able to just... Maybe. Uh, I wish I could grapple up there. Well, I can just run past everyone. That is a legitimate strategy. I can use boss memories to increase attack. Oh, I may not have been paying that much attention. Oh, shit. Ah! Fuck! What the hell? <laughs> I was not at all... ...ready for that. Fuck! <laughs> Give me a second, Jesus. I think I might have made a mistake. I think it's the weirdest fucking thing in the world that you can parry this thing. Totally gonna die. I'm gonna fucking burn to death. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. You can use boss. Right. So we'll do that. I think you could do that at the uh, bonfire, right? Uh, enhance attack power. There we go. Is that a little bundle of sticks tied to his horns? <laughs> no one tell Synthetic Tard he might get off on that. Some Ting Wong attack power. <laughs> we too low. I appreciate that reference. Pairing a giant monkey throwing shit at you sure is something. 
I don't think I ever got that far. Oh, you know, maybe actually applying the fucking Makiri counter would be a good idea. Wait, what? Oh, wait, Makiri counters are just latent skills, right? Right. Hit B as soon as they're about to do it. Gotcha. Come on now. What the fuck? Peeps like juking me here. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Good to see you back, Wolf. You and Rags need to do a stream together. You guys had funny... You guys had a great back and forth. Thoughts about you doing your own channel again and what it would be about? Uh, I'm not going to be doing my own channel again. Well, I see that even in the best Souls game. FromSoft still can't figure out how to make a camera that doesn't... ditch, or... feel like shit. Uh, come on. Oh, right, I can upgrade this too. <laughs> well, in theory, I need more coins. El Toro wins again. Happy your thoughts. Smiling Friends Season 2 this month. Oh, really? Cool. Camera commit seppuku. Camera dies twice per encounter. Ah, damn. Thoughts on Stellar Blade? I'm not interested. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like games that are like, I'm going to sell you on just pretty much sex appeal. Like, like the whole idea of like, Let's just present this character's giant ass as the cover of the fucking game. It's just so unappealing to me. It's just, it feels like you're doing it as like more of a culture war thing than like an actual artistic thing. And I'm just not interested in that. It could be a great game for all I know. I just not, uh, I don't feel like it has earned my attention.
And the fact that everyone's just using it as like, oh, look who... Western game devs would just make it ugly. And it's like, okay, sure. Such a boring shit conversation made by people who, like, are just trying to farm outrage clicks. And I don't want to engage with <laughs> that kind of shit. No opinion on the game, you know, gameplay-wise. It's just the meta surrounding it is such a, like, fucking turn-off for me. Come on. Jesus. Come on, bull. Let's get over here. Let me parry your fucking horns. What in the hell? I swear, he's not fucking attacking me as often as he usually does. Or at least he's not doing the one thing I want him to do. Come on, charge me. Okay, when I said charge me, I mean charge me in the way that I want you to. thing. I don't want you to do that. Alright, now I really need you to just do the thing. Firecrackers left. Is that a human? Come on, one more, one more, one more. Come on, do it. Damn it, fucked it up. Ah, come on. Shit, I'm gonna need more than just one. There we go. Get fucked. Smiling Friends released the first episode of season two on April Fools, along with the puppet remakes of, with the puppet remakes of three episodes. Huh. You can hear about that. You can find the episode places. Ah, I see. Alright. I take that to mean that I need to do a whole uh, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum, right? Glad to see you're doing okay. You're awesome, Wolf. Wolf, if you played Frostpunk, uh, no, I do own it, but I haven't gotten around to actually playing it. I don't suppose that one gave me, uh, 
Yeah, no. No, I need to fight real bosses. Oh, fair enough. Divine grass. <laughs> grass. I see what you mean. I know what you mean. Secret medicine that fully restores vitality and cures all status abnormalities. All right. No, I don't. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Thoughts on Synthetic Man? Uh, fucking pathetic. <laughs> I, I'm gonna use him as, like, my baseline for, like, as long as I'm not Synthetic Man, I, I feel like my life is going okay. I mean, I don't live with my parents, and he's older than me. So I guess there's that. <laughs> Oh, there was a full video on Twitter. Oh, so was it leaked? Subhuman, I'm trying to avoid using that kind of language especially since it's kind of been used by some really bad people and they use it against normal people in really horrible ways I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to start using the kind of language that synthetic man would use even if it's against him Much as I find him incredibly distasteful and revolting as a human being. I'll happily call him deeply pathetic and bordering on worthless. But, yeah, I don't want to start using the kind of language that people like him would use. You'll still say troglodyte, right? What does troglodyte mean? I don't feel like that's a word that's used too much, but I don't honestly know the definition off the top of my head. Happy to see you're doing well, Wolf. By the way, did you play Infinite's campaign? Fucking unfortunately. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts on its story, open world. Oh boy. Where do I begin? I guess I'll start with the easier one, which is that the open world is vapid, it's vacant, it's empty. It's putrid, it's worthless. It's just a bunch of worthless fetch quests. The, the open world is so... just barren. I can't believe that they don't have more than one fucking biome in the whole game. Like, one of the main plot points of Halo 1 was that it was odd that there... I guess it wasn't one of the main plot points, but it was a, a moment where... It was an oddity that people legitimately, uh, that everyone was like, oh, I guess this ring has its own weather system. Like Cortana brings it up uh, during, um, what's it called? Uh, assault in the control room. But then Halo Infinite's Halo has like the most boring fucking... Uh, a biome ever and you know I've heard it said like oh well they were trying to just make it look like the Pacific Northwest and it's like you know what Days Gone was literally based in the Pacific Northwest and had way more variety in its environments by the way play Days Gone it's a it's a really fucking good game actually extremely enjoyable I love the story I love the, the main character but it was totally it was it was doing what 343 does with all of their games it was chasing a trend, it was a gimmick, and it was done worse than every other game it was trying to emulate. 
It was just a bunch of worthless fetch quests. The bosses. Ugh. So lame. Uh, the the in-world bosses. Or the in-the-open-world bosses, I should say. Because, like, the normal bosses were usually pretty fun and generally well-designed. I'll give them that, at least. I'm looking at the GPS tracker of this fucking dude who's supposed to be delivering my pizza and he doesn't know what he's fucking doing. He's gone past my apartment like 11 times. Seen that Smud Boy has been balding to this day about the Synthetic Man stream? Yep, and luckily no one cares about Smud Boy or anything he has to say or thinks, so keep molding. Have you seen Smiling Friends? Yes, I fucking loved it. Um, yeah, it's... I'd rather take the monotony of just regular... You know what? Maybe this is a controversial opinion. I feel like... Um, I feel like we need a return to the general, like, levels. Right? Like... I don't... I don't like that every game is trying to be an open or semi-open world. Can we just have our ten levels in a video game and call it good? I don't think we need to have everything be an open world, especially when it's not adding anything. There's nothing that Halo Infinite being an open world does that adds anything to the experience. It just pads it out. Because otherwise, the actual levels are really few and far between. They're really shallow. They're not particularly fun. It's just pointless. I feel like linear level game design really isn't all that bad. And it really just depends on how you use it. Like uh, Bungie in Halo 3 had really linear levels, but they were there was an openness to them that allowed you to take on situations a lot more. Kind of like, uh, like, think of the storm. Uh, it was like the fourth level in Halo 3, where it has those two, or that one scarab that comes in. And you can, there's three different ways that you can take it on in that otherwise pretty small area of the map where you can either shoot at it from the bridge with those homing rockets. You can use a mongoose or warthog and have uh, your AI companions or maybe even uh, another uh, player that you're playing with uh, shoot its legs down. Or you can go up the elevator and jump onto the scarab and hijack it without taking down its legs. Or you can just, you know, shoot the shit out of it with your regular weapons. So that's four different ways that you can take on a major enemy without having an open world. It's a really linear level, but there's so many different ways you can take on that that challenge. It's fantastic. It just feels like every game feels like it needs to be an open world to pad it out rather than have just a really good solid story with regular levels, you know? I, I I want linearity back. I prefer it to everyone LARPing at being fucking open world when they're not good at it. Uh, as to the story, it's a mess. It's a fucking mess. It begins horribly with the whole, all right, Remember how overpowered and much of a problem Infinity was in Halo 4 and 5? Well, now we just made a new problem by giving the Brutes ships that destroy Infinity immediately. We got rid of, like, all the characters because they were too embarrassed by Halo 5 to keep any of them. It basically just resets the board because Halo 5 was such a fucking embarrassment. Oh, hold on. Hold that thought. My pizza's here. God damn it. Let me pause.
All right. Uh, so where were we? Talking about how shit Halo Infinite is. Uh, yeah. So, like, there, there's that whole problem with just destroying the setting from the get-go. Um, they didn't want to address anything with the Guardians. Like, that's the thing. You can't just pretend that Halo 5 didn't happen. Okay? You can't just, like, try and brush all that shit under the rug and pretend, like, you didn't catastrophically ruin the whole universe you got to address that and the game tries so hard to pretend that halo 5 doesn't exist to the point that it actually becomes unintentionally funny they never mention the didact they don't mention uh the the what were they called the prometheans they don't mention the librarian they don't mention anything from halo 4 or 5 it's so funny and uh, the, the whole game is basically just like playing catch up. All the interesting shit happened off screen, just like Destiny. And you have all these moments where the games, it, it's like, here's a flashback to what actually happened. By the way, Cortana committed genocide. She destroyed the brute homeworld. But then I guess she felt bad about it later and killed herself. God, it sucks. I hate it. Halo Infinite ruined everything. It's like such a cavalcade of shit that it's hard to even know where to start with everything. You know, one thing that they could have done with the open world that would have been really nice... You have all these fortresses that you can take on, but they don't do that. They, or they don't do anything with it, rather. Because you can take them on, and it basically just, it makes, uh, makes the game easier. Because you can just requisition weapons and armor and tanks and shit all the time. To the point that legendary difficulty is pretty much necessary to have any challenge in the game at all. And, uh, you know, you could have done something with it in the end where, like, you can save more UNSC troops, try and bring that com that camaraderie that the previous games completely lacked. And they didn't do that. They didn't bother trying. Nothing you do in the game matters. And it, it it's basically just, Chief is on Halo and he kills Brutes. The end. That's it. That's the whole fucking narrative. Also, I guess... There's a new alien race that's worse than the Forerunners. Great. Cool. Always got to keep upping the stakes because you can't think of anything new or original. Uh, fucking Atriox went back in time, I guess. Because, you know, I guess that's the mark of everything bad when you start introducing time travel. 343 Halo games are kind of akin to Star Wars sequels in a way. Damn. I'm more offended by the Halo, by 343's Halo games than I am by the Star Wars sequels. I'll never stop being mad about what they did to Halo. I'll never stop being mad about how they ruined Cortana. Just, ugh. How did Halo Infinite ruin everything when Halo 4 ruined everything and then Halo 5 ruined everything again? I, ironically, the the three mainline 343 Halo games follow a very similar trajectory as the Star Wars sequels did. Halo 4 was the one that a lot of people like until you start thinking about it and you realize it breaks everything about the universe. Halo 5 is the edgy contrarian one that really kind of ruined everything. Halo Infinite is the one where they tried to be like, Here, here's some member berries. Remember how much you like Halo? We brought the Brutes back. We brought a new Cortana back. We brought the old armor back. But it's still shit, and it still ruins, fundamentally destroys a character just like uh, 
you know, Rise of Skywalker ruined uh, Vader's sacrifice, and Halo Infinite ruined Cortana's character forever and made her a genocidal bitch who killed everyone and everything everywhere and then fucking felt bad about it. Like, that's how they resolved that conflict. She just fucking feels bad about it. Then she kills herself. Great. And then she's... There's this stupid fucking scene at the end where she talks to Cortana. Or, she talks to Cortana. She talks to Chief and the weapon. And she's like, you guys need to learn from my mistakes. And it's like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> Genocide is not a mistake, you bitch. <laughs> I don't need to learn from that. I understand that genocide is bad. You dumb cunt. You ruined her. You took one of my favorite characters in a video game and you ruined her. It sucks. It's the final nail in the coffin. And it's all just to facilitate resetting the board. We're 3 4 3. We're, uh, you know, we're back to where Halo 3 ended. The Covenant is fractured. Uh, humanity is on the run and they're the underdogs again. Chief and new Cortana, because that's what she fucking is, are stranded on a new alien world. And there's a new threat out there. It's literally just the setup for Halo 4 again. All That's what every 343 game culminates in. Just resetting the board back to where Halo 3 ended. Fucking worthless. What toppings did I get? I got pepperoni and bold pepperoni. It's very good. It's got some seasoning on the crust, too. I'm not too loud, right? I can move my mic away if I'm like... I don't want to make you guys like have to deal with my chewing. Those rogue eyes are still out there, and the guardians. No, that's the thing. The rogue eyes all killed themselves too. <laughs> Cortana tells them all to go kill themselves to destroy a Spartan facility or something. That's how they resolve it. They're like, "All right, all the rogue eyes just killed themselves. Great." And then there's the. Uh... Ah, fuck. The Guardians, right. What do they do with the Guardians? I think they just like swept it under the rug and pretended it didn't happen. How is pizza in Michigan any good? I would assume it's the same pretty much everywhere, but yeah. If you ever come to Michigan, Jets has really good pizza and they're a Michigan brand. They are pricey, but it's worth it. When is the Wolf Mukbang? No, I'm not doing that shit. Not to mention one-upping Bungie for no reason. Yeah, they're trying to just... That's the thing. 343 feels like they need to just... They feel the need to prove themselves by constantly introducing bigger and badder threats. But, like, ODST didn't have, like, that big or bad of a threat. And ODST is arguably the best game. Narratively, anyway. And, uh... It's so low stakes, and it's just really good character-focused storytelling. But they just... It's kind of like what Marvel does. You know how uh, Ozymandias from Breaking Bad, it makes you feel like the world is ending to see a family fall apart. But Marvel can have an apocalypse in every fucking movie, and it never feels like there's any stakes at all. It's the same thing with 343's Halo. They manage to try and one-up Bungie constantly and always fall short. My sister's boyfriend was visiting from Nebraska and he specifically said that Michigan has surprisingly good pizza. 
I never really thought about it. I mean, it is my favorite food, so... <laughs> Maybe there's something to it. Honestly, fuck 343. They've had it for so long and made nothing. I know. They've, la they've made no lasting impact. Nothing they did had anything that contributed to gaming or to Halo at all. Bungie pushed the line. Bungie changed the first person shooter forever. At least on consoles. And 343, not that they needed to like innovate in that same way, but you know, you could at least make a lasting impact on Halo that isn't just overwhelmingly negative. Just sucks. I hate talking about it too because it's like uh, it's one of those things that I've been dealing with for years. And like, you know, we all talk about Star Wars, or you guys rather, all talk about Star Wars. Meanwhile, I'm still stuck on, they ruined my favorite game. <laughs> they spent 13 years doing it. But when she also made Reach, true. Reach has a lot of problems that people don't like to address, but it does have a lot of good things in there, too. One thing that has really stood out to me, especially after all these 343 games, is noticing just how good of an ending Reach has that 343 just continues to ignore. Because Reach has such a hopeful ending. You know, that, that scene at the very end where you see Noble Six's helmet across this burned glass landscape, but then afterward there's a time jump in like the uh, 2589 or something and it's being re-terraformed nature's coming back it's it's there's still beauty to be found out there and it's so it it plays so well into the theme of all these games that like you fight no matter what even if you don't live to see the fruits of your labor even if uh you die feeling like you just failed everyone it's worth it to do it because people later on can continue on and make a life after you have left. It's a beautiful ending. It, it, it honestly makes me a little emotional thinking about it sometimes because it's genuinely one of the most beautiful themes I've seen in any video game. And... You know, how, how can 343's Halo exist in that same universe? They just keep introducing new threats over and over and over and over and over again that are always apocalyptic. And, and it just ruins the ending of Reach, which was so powerful. And it just sucks. Yeah, tell them to make it count. Yeah, thematically, Reach was kind of brilliant. And its story while having issues, does support that theme reasonably well. <laughs> A lot better than, say, TLJ. On a similar yet different topic, how about Gears of War? I never really liked Gears of War. <laughs> I mean, I liked the character stuff in the first three Gears of War games. The characters I remember really being pretty funny, but I've always thought the plot was dumb as shit. It keeps introducing shit out of nowhere and being like, you should care about this. Like fucking Dom's wife wasn't even fucking mentioned in the first game. Suddenly I'm meant to care about her. Or Marcus's dad. Marcus's dad. <laughs> it's so, so stupid. And then Gears of War 4 fucking sucked. I can't believe they killed Anya off screen. What is it with these games that are like trying to promote like we're, we're all inclusive and feminist. And then they like do the most unfeminist thing by like killing off the strong female characters. So shit. I never bothered with Gears 5 because it looked like ass. 
And the four was so bad I didn't bother. Where was it mentioned in the first game? I don't remember that at all. What was destroyed worse, Halo or Star Wars? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to set my bias aside because my first instinct wants to be Halo, but... I don't know. I don't know, honestly. Because they were destroyed in very, very similar ways. <laughs> I'd almost say they're damn near equal. Star Wars fell from a higher height. Maybe in terms of, like, culture, but, like... Halo, culturally for gaming, was kind of what Star Wars was for movies for a long time. I mean, there's a reason why Halo has the reputation it has. It, it was one of the biggest video games out there. I really feel like it might actually be damn near uh, equal. They, they both were just... Totally fucked in very similar ways. Shit, even uh, Halo has a whole bunch of new shitty books, too. So, <sighs> I don't know. It's, it's very difficult. I don't know if I could actually, I don't know if I could quantify that. Because Halo represented for video games a lot of what, Star Wars represented for movies, and now they're both shit, and they're both shit for very similar reasons. Dom's wife is mentioned exactly once at one of the hobo camps, and it's so vague you don't even know until two. I don't remember it at all. I mean, granted, it's also been like seven years since I played any of those games, but... That's funny. New Marathon might be good. No, it won't. <laughs> you know it won't. Especially with all the shit that's come out about Bungie lately. Like, ugh. I don't I don't have any faith in them. At least with Halo you can play the multiplayer and pretend the campaign doesn't exist. Can you though? <laughs> Halo 4's multiplayer sucked. Halo 5 had like Halo 5 had a decent system with really lazy maps and uh, it just didn't feel like Halo. Halo Infinite has a great gameplay loop, but it has the most predatory microtransactions I've ever seen in my life. 20 fucking dollars for one armor set? Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. It's really funny to call things the TLJFX, especially when it's accurate. Well, it's funny, because... TLJ is more like the Halo 5 of Star Wars, because Halo 5 came out two years earlier. And destroyed it in much the same way. At least we didn't see Luke's Master Cheeks. No, but we did get to see Luke essentially raped. <laughs> Oh, you know what? If we count the Halo show, it might actually be Halo that was fucked worse than Star Wars. <laughs> you may have mentioned before, but what did you think of the new Dune movies? I liked them. You know, they're definitely not as good as the book. I would recommend the book to everyone, everywhere, always, all the time. Because it's one of the best books I've ever read. Um, but I think the movies are fun. It was certainly a great break to actually see a movie that like felt like a real movie rather than a lot of movies that just feel like shitty cash grabs with uh, no heart or soul behind them. Like, Much as I have a lot to criticize about uh, both the Dune movies, 
I always felt like Denis Villeneuve loved and cared about the book and wanted to make the best adaptation he could. He didn't do great in some areas, but in a lot of areas, I felt he did do really good. And I I, I think they're good, all t- uh, altogether pretty good movies, but definitely, definitely read the book and then watch the movies. I, I think they're both worth it. Halo Infinite ended up the way it did because it was mostly just built up on contract by contract bases. True, but it was also that they were making like four different games for like most of the development cycle because they couldn't fucking figure out what game they were even making. Shit. Do you think a Red Rising movie would be good? I feel like there's too much to cover for it to be a movie. It has to be a show, especially if you get into the later books. Like, Dark Age is not a small book. It is a beefy tome. And you you could not cover that in a movie. You, you could maybe do the first three books in movies. You can't do four and five in movie format. They gotta be shows. I mean, everything could be good, sure. I just... I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm getting this like this feeling of like why do I care so much about seeing my favorite books adapted to film, you know? Like it, there's this cultural obsession with it, and I don't really understand why. Even though I'm part of the problem and I I do get excited when I see that too, but there's not really any reason for it. It's not like movies or shows make a book more legitimate. And when I really think about it, no matter how much I love Lord of the Rings, no matter how much uh, I enjoyed the Dune movies, every single time that I have watched a movie adaptation of a book, no matter how good that adaptation is, it's never been as good as the book. At least from my personal experience. And... I always wonder, like, what's even the fucking point? I'm always going to get a lesser version. So, like, why do I care so much about adaptation? Why do we need to have everything adapted, you know? It's like with Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time is a fucking horrendously awful show. Why do we need that? I could just read the books. I'll read the books over and over again because they're great. Plus, especially, like, part of the reason that the Dune movies fall a bit flat for me in areas is because the Dune books take, yes, even The Shining. I read The Shining book before I watched the movie, and it was pretty disappointing to watch the movie. Um, sorry, getting back on track. Uh, part of the reason that the Dune books... Yeah, um, fall a bit flat in some areas is because or sorry the movies fall a bit flat in some areas is because the books take full advantage of their medium it switches it like hops perspectives between sentences at times so like it won't just be like like most books are third person limited so like one chapter takes place mostly from the perspective of just one person but Dune will have, like, multiple perspectives that take place, you know, they'll switch perspectives between paragraphs. Like, there's this scene that you may have heard referenced, because it it is a highly referenced scene, that there's this dinner scene in the book that was not in the movie. I understand why it wasn't in the movie, because it would be extraordinarily difficult to adapt it in any way that would make it look good. But you... You basically have all these enemies in like one room and you're getting all their perspectives inside their thoughts of like how they're all plotting against each other that you can't really translate to film in any way that wouldn't look extremely awkward and shit. So I understand why it wasn't in there. It is disappointing to me as a fan of the book, but I understand why it couldn't be included in a way. 
and, and but it's like I feel that way about pretty much every book. Like film can't take advantage of the things that are in books for the most part because books are a different medium. They do things that film literally cannot do. Games come very very close. Um, damn near pretty much almost exactly the same. But like, unless the book is like Mistborn, where it's kind of just vapid and surface level already, it won't translate to film in a way that'll be exactly satisfying at all. And I just always wonder, like, what is it, our obsession with like, we need to get something adapted to film as if to make it more legitimate, when of course, it isn't more legitimate that way. And if anything, a bad adaptation can turn people off from the books. I'm so mad at the Wheel of Time show for fucking it up so catastrophically that it's probably going to make a lot of people not want to read the books. And the books are, you know, extremely flawed, but really good. Mahler said you can describe something impossible, but you can't make a visual representation of something impossible. Yeah, like, uh, like, uh, I, because I completely agree with that. In it, um, the way that they destroy Pennywise at the end of the book is they, it's all mental, you know? It's not a physical battle, it is a mental battle where they're inside the mind of Pennywise, kind of, and they're, it's like this weird cosmic shit that's very difficult to actually explain and pretty much fucking impossible to translate to film in, in any way. Um, I don't like what they did in It Part 2 where they bullied Pennywise to death. That shit was fucking dumb as hell. But, you know, I understand why they couldn't do the way that the book did it because it is pretty much impossible to put to film. And Dune is that way in a lot of aspects, too. Like, it's impossible to film a lot of this stuff that's in Dune because it's just, it takes advantage of the medium in a way that movies and TV shows can't. So... I'm not really excited for a Red Rising series, much as I adore these books, because I know it's not going to be as good. However, if I won a billion dollars, I would immediately start working on a script, and I'd go up to Pierce Brown right now. I would slam the script on his desk and be like, I will do anything to make a TV show of Red Rising. Because I think it can be done. It's just... You know, it depends on the person working on it. Like Peter Jackson, like, there is a lot of stuff in the Lord of the Rings films that didn't make it, or rather in the books that didn't make it to the films. Like, like actually a, a fuck ton of stuff that uh, didn't make it in. But it still feels like a passion project by someone who really cares about the story. In the same way with Denis Villeneuve, really. Um, but yeah, it's, it depends on the story. It depends on the person making it. And I'm just not excited to see my favorite books get translated into worse films. You know, there is a scene in, in, uh, the fifth Red Rising book. Uh, I'm not going to really give details of the scene because I want people to read this book and I want people to understand how good it is for themselves. But there's a scene in the book that like in my mind's eye, I knew exactly how I would translate it to film. And it, it's, it's a brilliant scene. And I know that however it's translated into film, if it's translated into film at all, it just won't be as good, you know? <laughs> so, I'm not excited for it. I know it's not going to be good, probably. Even if it is good, it's not going to be the books. So, 
Hope that answered your question. Are you going to play Hellblade 2 when it releases? Isn't it already out? Oh, Hellblade. I was thinking of Hell Divers. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I have the ge the first game installed to uh, refresh my memory of it, but yeah, I'm interested in it. The Doom films capture the spectacle, but not the depth, and I think Denis knew that was how it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I I completely agree with that. It it captures, like you said, the spectacle. I think the visual style is brilliant, like. Uh, way better than anything that I ever thought of when I was reading the books. Um, and I think it does translate the gist of the plot pretty well, but it is just like the book, but with a lot less depth, you know? Not bad. I mean, I really like those movies, but they're certainly nowhere near as good as the books. I was so confused when Tom Bombadil showed up in the book. I, I, I'm going to die on the hill of saying I don't really care about Tom Bombadil and don't think he was a good addition to the book in the first place. When I think of the things that they took out of the book, I'm thinking of, uh, I totally don't remember their names, but the uh, the soldiers from Gondor who were showing uh, Pippin around Minas Tirith. I'm thinking of those, those native peoples that uh, helped Aragorn in the armies, uh, closer to Gondor uh, you know there's just a lot of like world building stuff or or uh the Barrow Whites how, how uh, the Hobbits got their swords in Fellowship um there's a lot of little things like that that aren't necessarily important if you take them out and replace it with something different but you know th there's a lot that's in there that really shows just how um how much bigger the world actually is have you seen the David Lynch Dune yeah I don't really like it <laughs> I was actually a little bit excited for the Denis Villeneuve Dune because he had pretty much the same issues with the David Lynch version that I had. And I was like, okay, so it seems like this is a guy who understands Dune and is at least going to try and adapt it in a way that makes as much sense as possible. The scouring of the showers, Shire seemed to have been really awkward to have included in the film. Yeah, it, it, the thing is, is that the the movies needed to restructure some things in order to make it work. And scouring of the Shire works really well on a thematic level. On a plot level, it seems a little odd. Um, in the context of the movies, that is, it, it makes sense in the book, but with the movies we got, it would not have made any sense. And at least they did throw kind of a bone with, like, the vision in Galadriel's uh, mirror where uh, you see what could happen. One thing the Lynch film did better was the portrayal of Jessica. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it's been years since I've seen the Lynch film, so I don't really remember it all that well. I just remember, because I, I read the book when I was 15, and I loved it. And then I found out it was a movie, and I was like, oh, I gotta see the movie. And then I watched it, and I was like, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> she carried herself with a regal grace that was sorely lacking from Villeneuve. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Um, though I did like the, the more personal, like, her trying to protect Paul in the first movie. And I loved how intimidating she was in the second. But I don't disagree with that. The significance of the Numenorian blade that Mary used to stab the Witch King was an unfortunate omission. Uh, I'm totally blanking on it right now, but... Uh, I'm sure there, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that did not make it, unfortunately. Uh, let me just make sure that there's no super chats I missed. These streams are the only things that bring me joy in life. Keep them coming. Neat. Days Gone is definitely fun. Has some gameplay tisms, but I enjoyed it. Would have made a way better TV show than The Last of Us. I'm going to be honest. Oh, I might get in trouble for this. I don't really think The Last of Us show is really that good. <laughs> 
I mean, look, I liked parts of the Last of Us show. Um, I thought episode three was fantastic. That was my favorite episode of the whole show. But its pacing issues were a serious hindrance on the show. Um, and much as I love episode three, it really, I feel, detracts from the actual story of uh, of Joel and Ellie. And it just kind of distracts from them. It, it, uh, it needed to be more their focus. It's a great episode in isolation. And I would have liked a show that's kind of like, uh, you know, almost like a, uh, what's the word? Um, where you have a bunch of different stories together that are loosely related. It starts with an A, I'm pretty sure. Oh, God, what is it called? Anthology. That's the one. If you if they made an anthology series of episodes like episode three of The Last of Us or uh, what was that episode uh, that was pretty much doing The Last of Us 2, but more competently, uh, you know, stuff like that where you get a whole bunch of different perspectives. If they wanted to do something like that, that would have been really cool. But The Last of Us trying to do all of that while also telling Joel and Ellie's story. I feel like just kind of made the whole thing really bumpy. And there were a lot of things that I feel like just weren't at all as good as the game. Because every single thing that the show did, even if it didn't do it badly at all, there's nothing in the show that I feel like wasn't done much better in the game. And like, I'm not even that big of a fan of, of the first game. I, I'll admit I like it better now. Because like the first time I played it. I, so I bought a PS4. Back in the day. Just before Uncharted 4 came out. And like the first couple games I bought were. Uh, the, the Nathan Drake trilogy collection. And The Last of Us. Because I was like well I hear great things about both of them. Uh, I played through the first three Uncharted games. And then Uncharted 4. Because it came out like a week after I bought my PS4. And I loved all four of them. I, I was like so ecstatically in love with them. And I was like, well, Last of Us is made by the same people. And everyone says it's like the best game ever made. So uh, it's going to be great. And I played it and I was like, well, that was not the best game ever made, you know. Um, but I, I played it again before watching the show. And I did feel like I liked it more. Uh, in high, uh, no More now. But... Uh, you know, I'm not like the biggest fan of the game in general, but there's nothing the show does that feels at all close to how good the game was in a lot of its uh, storytelling aspects. One thing that really irritated me in the show is how they hen handled uh, Henry and Sam. Because, you know, everyone talks about how shocking uh, uh, Sarah's death is at the beginning of the game. I find Henry and Sam's death to be way more impactful. Um, and, and this is something I disagree with on Mahler because I talked about it with him. I, I didn't like how um, when Henry shoots himself, we get Ellie, uh, you know, like uh, shaking, like, you know, jolting uh, from that image. And I told him, like, uh, you know, I think Joel, like, like not having him shake from it, is bad and Mahler gave me his reasons for why he thinks it's better in the show, but I disagree. Um, cause like, I feel like that scene helps inform Joel's decision later in the game because in that moment, during that little quest with Sam and Henry, he allowed himself to let his guard down. And when Sam died, it was, you know, obviously a horrible thing. And then he's trying to keep Henry from killing himself. And then he does. And it's just like a, a final reminder of this is what happens when you get too close. Which is why in the very next level, he tries to pawn Ellie off on Tommy. Because he doesn't want to get too close. He doesn't want to deal with uh, the loss, potentially, of, of uh, another daughter figure. Um, and then obviously the rest of the game goes on and I feel like what happened with Sarah 
And then what happens with Henry and Sam uh, further enforces Joel's, like, he can't allow this to happen again. So he has to, like, in his mind, he has to make sure that uh, Ellie survives. He can't allow the Fireflies to do what he did. And I, I've spoken about it before. I don't care at all about, like, if uh, a vaccine uh, could have been made at all. I mean, I've I've heard people say it would be impossible. Like, even if we just go, uh, you know, uh, best faith interpretation and say, like, oh, you know, m- maybe it could have been. I don't feel like the decision from Joel was really necessary. Because, like, you find all those data logs around that level, right? And it says, uh, like, oh, we don't actually know if this is going to work. But he had already made that decision before he found any of those, before he had any evidence that there was maybe not uh, totally a, a for sure chance that a cure would be made. And I feel like that's more impactful. The fact that um, his perspective is that he's willing to let the rest of the world die before he loses another daughter. And I think that's a really powerful thing. And I, I don't even disagree with him. Like, I feel like Last of Us 2, if they really wanted to go with that, should have been more about the repercussions of that action. And instead, the zombies are like a fucking afterthought in that game. Um, but, you know, I feel like, just in general, I feel like the show really wasn't particularly good. I feel like that's the kind of show where I was like, yeah, that was all right. And then I'll just never watch it again because there's, why would I, you know? It, it didn't do anything that's particularly good or special. It didn't do anything that makes me want to watch it again. I, I feel like the show's a little overrated. I'm sorry, we were talking about something else before I got sidetracked on The Last of Us, wasn't I? I don't remember what it was. (laughs) Does anyone remember what I was talking about before? Uh, Or what I was going to, anyway. To be fair, the vaccine wouldn't do much. Well, that's the thing. Like, I don't care about that that aspect of the conversation, you know? Like, whether the vaccine would or would not have worked is immaterial to me. I only care about the decision that Joel made, and I think that's a really powerful decision. And I think it's really what made the book, or the book, the game kind of impactful at the end. It's the fact that even if there was the possibility of it, that Joel would have did any would have made that same decision anyway, and that's uh, that's that's my takeaway. Like I don't really care about whether the vaccine could be distributed or could be made in the first place because what I really care about is Joel's decision. It was a it was a really really great writing choice in the game, and that's what I remember most about it. Like I don't remember much about the gameplay because I don't think the gameplay was particularly good in The Last of Us. I just care about that one decision because that was a really uh, impactful ending, even with my generally low opinion of the game. Because like I said, he made that decision before he uh, knew whether or not it would work. That's what matters to me. Uh Uh-oh, get ready to be community noted. For what? I hate that they made Ellie dumb regarding knowing Joel was lying at the end of the first one she knew. Yeah. I don't know if she knew exactly. 
so much as she suspected. I I don't like the way they decided to take The Last of Us 2 at all. I thought it was extremely boring. The zebra, man. Think about the zebra. Fuck the zebra. They had their chance. I think The Last of Us 2, will, or Season 2, will probably unite both sides for better or for worse. That'd be really funny if, like, Neil was like, oh, it's just these toxic gamers who don't like The Last of Us 2. And then the show comes out, and then everyone in the world also says, actually, this is shit. <laughs> That's so funny. Be right back. All right. Well, I think we'll go on for like another 30 minutes and then we'll call that day. Now, something that I do want to bring up that uh, I got to leave up to you guys is a, a potential streaming schedule going forward. Now, ordinarily, I would not have done a stream, a second stream this close to the previous one. Because I'm, I'm thinking only, like, a couple times a month we'll be doing this. Both because I don't have the time, really, to do it much more than that anyway. And so that it's not, like, you know, overbearing or anything. And there'll be, like, three to five hour streams, I think. Um, so the reason I decided to do it today is because I really want to stream on April 18th. The reason why I want to stream on April 18th is because the new Moon Studios game, uh, new, No Rest for the Wicked, is coming out. It's a, uh, or rather, it's coming out in early access, I should say. Is that, and it's, um, I, I, I didn't start streaming uh, in time to uh, stream Ori in the Blind Forest. And then I left YouTube before Will of the Wisps came out. So I think it'd be kind of fun, both because I already love Moon Studios and I want to play this game already, but it'd be fun to finally be able to play a Moon Studios game as it comes out. Now, it is early access, so it's not going to be like the, the full thing by any means. But... It is something that I really want to play and something that I really wanted to stream. So that's what we'll be doing two Thursdays from now on March, or sorry, April the 18th. And I do want to make sure that these streams aren't interfering with other streams. 
uh, Moon Studios is yes, yes, uh, as in Ori. They were the ones who made the Ori games. This one is not at all associated with the Ori games. It's a, it's a pirate game. It seems pretty neat from what I've seen. Uh, so that's what we'll be playing two Thursdays from now. And, uh, you know, obviously there's not going to be Saturday streams because that's when EFAP generally goes live. There's not going to be Sunday streams because that's when Metal goes live. Uh, I understand uh, there's enough crossover uh, between audiences that people will probably want to be... Because Friday Night Tights is on Friday, right? So, And I don't know when Open Bar or Real BBC go live. Um, I guess I can ask Mahler about that. Uh, but as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's no Thursday... There's no general, like, big Thursday streams, right? So if you guys are okay with it, Maybe we do Thursday streams, just every other Thursday. What do you guys think about that? Have I played Sekiro before? I have, but I've never finished it. And I would certainly not say I'm very good at it. Oh shit. Oh. What a hit, really. Open bar is Thursday. Oh, okay. Is it always on Thursday? Oh, fuck. Damn. Okay, open bar on Thursday, BBC on Tuesday. All right, is there anything that generally happens on Wednesdays? Because, <laughs> I mean, I'll be streaming next Thursday no matter what, just because that's the time that that Moon Studios game comes out. But after that, if I can make it so that I'm not interfering with, you know, other streams, not only because... It's a revenue source for those guys, but also because I don't want to be the one who's like, you know, taking away time from, uh, you know, the other things you guys want to watch. So, looks like Thursday, Monday, Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. Okay, so it looks like Tuesdays are real BBC. Thursday is open bar. Friday, obviously, is Friday Night Tights. Saturday, this is EFAP. Sunday is uh, Moodle Stream. Nothing goes on on Monday or Wednesday, apparently. Am I correct in that? Gundam Streams on Wednesdays. Okay. Oh, shit. I didn't even notice him there. Alright. Is everyone okay with Mondays, then? <laughs> Prefer Wednesday. To be fair, FN Tiger isn't really an EFAP related thing, right? Well, neither is BBC, uh, Real BBC or uh, Open Bar necessarily, right? I'm just trying, because I know the crossover between audiences. So I'm just trying to come up with, like, what is the best way that I can make sure that everyone's able to watch the things that they want to watch without having to compromise on uh, anything else. Monday, 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 Wednesday. Well, I guess I can make a straw poll for this. Let's do that. And then anyone who didn't catch this live can just comment on the VOD and tell me what they think.
And remember, it's uh, n next Thursday I'm streaming either way because that's when the game comes out. It's We're asking the question of what I do after that. Okay, share, copy, and let's... There you go, boys. Vote away. I love democracy, Palpatine. <laughs> What's the game called? Uh, no Rest for the Wicked. It's a pirate game made by the same people who made uh, the Ori games. Looks like Monday is definitely winning right now. Wednesday's still getting some votes, though. Pokemon go to the polls. Oh my god, you didn't have to remind me of that. You didn't have to do that. And remember, these are going to be bi-weekly. They're not going to be weekly. Shit. God damn, his spear is fucking powerful. Do I not have any more pellets? No, I'm all out. Yeah, parry this dude. The firecracker only does so much. Parry? Or can I do Makiri counter on him? I always assumed that the red things always meant that you can't parry or counter. Ugh. Right, does the red kanji symbol mean that you can't parry it? Alright, it looks like Monday wins. Can we do a poll whether bi-weekly means twice a week, every week, or once a week, every two weeks? Uh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> you can Makiri the red thing. Makiri is very specifically for thrusts. Okay, so I can Makiri that. Interesting. Oh, right, I forgot I can slide. Red symbol means you can't block or parry, but it does mean that I can still Makiri. Good to know. Twice a week on my... No. <laughs> While I appreciate the enthusiasm, no. I cannot do that. <laughs> you can do three things with the red stuff. Jump forward or counter on a very small time window. Okay.
shit. I didn't get that Makiri at all. Fuck. Shit. This guy's tough as fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, and I got a fucking ogre there. Stargriff Mondays die, and in the ashes, Wolf Mondays rise. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm gonna be totally honest. I uh, I am not very heartbroken that Star Grift ain't around no more. If you don't get to parry down, this game is impossible. Yeah, I parrying has always been a difficulty for me in all from soft games. I'm terrible at it. And this is a game where it's like, all right, now you need to do the one thing you're really not good at. Because, you know, I always make tank builds in these games. What am I being attacked by? Is that a guy on the other side of the... Oh. <laughs> uh, I never saw it when Ryan came on the show. I just remember, like, listening to Star Wars Theory and being like, man... I don't know if I could be more bored. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be kind of uh, neutral when it comes to uh, when it comes to guests, when it comes to you know just generally uh, how the show goes. But oh man, did I not care at all for the Star Griff thing? Not to say, obviously, that I have any ill will toward Star Wars theory or. Uh, think that it was a mistake to try and make something uh, between him and Mahler, but I, I just found that show very, very boring. <laughs> but Wolf, don't you like... Uh, don't you like Star Wars Theory? Just reading Super Chats for three hours and Mubes and Ryan carrying the show. <laughs> I mean, it is a an interesting, uh, unorthodox way of uh, doing a podcast. I'll, I'll give him that. God damn, this guy's harder than like literally any of the other bosses. Fuck me. We're gonna see how many times I can die to him in the next 15 minutes. I can fucking parry a dog, but I can't parry that guy with a spear. Oh, 
Oh, holy shit. Did I just slide into his face and kick him off his ass? That's fucking awesome. I want to see if I can do that again. Let's see. Shit, how do I... How do I slide? I don't remember. Okay, that's how you slide. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay, maybe that's not how I actually happened. That would have been really fucking cool if you could slide and kick a dude in the face. What in the actual goddamned fuck? <laughs> oh, fuck it, just die. <laughs> Remember, if it's a thrusting attack, you can make Kiri counter it. It may look scary, but you can do it. Well, that's the thing. I could do it against, like, normal ones, but it doesn't seem... I don't know if it's just that I'm parrying too fast. Or what, but, uh... Did not seem to be working against that other guy. Oh! Alright. Let's try. Button mashing sounds. Yeah. That's how you can tell that I'm bad at this game. God, if only this fucking tree wasn't right here. Ah, there we go! Fuck. Alright, come on, let's do it. Oh, fuck. God damn it. It'd be really great if I didn't have to deal with this fucking bald retard here. Get you and your ugly fucking haircut the fuck out of here. Alright, come on. Ah, shit. That wasn't a... Come on, let's do it again. Ah, shit. Okay. I just need to get over there without... <sighs> It'd be really nice if I didn't have to dodge an army while I was trying to get there. Alright. Come on. Come on now. What the fuck are you doing up there? Shit. Come on. Fucking hell. Doesn't make it any better that this is an extremely small arena to be doing this in.
Why not play Stellar Blade? I am not interested in it. Oh my god, this fucking dude! Can I just fight the fucking boss on his own, please? No one wants you here, you fucking loser. Come on now. Fuck! <laughs> God damn it. Swap your sidestep for a parry. Oh, that's the thing. I keep getting forced to the edges, and there's like fucking 11 feet of space. And you got this fucking bald asshole. He keeps trying to fucking ruin it the whole time. Like every time I go over there. I'm just trying to not have to spend like 10 minutes killing 50 different dudes so that I can fight this fucking boss. Maybe I just have to wait until everyone's like... Okay, well it looks like it's done now. Come on. Hit me. Hit me! Shit. Keep fucking hitting the damn button too early. <laughs> why? Why even fucking bother? You can't be sent over the edge if you parry on time. Yeah, the only problem is that I need to parry on time. I feel like you need to be way more specific with uh, Mikiri counters on this guy than with anyone else. Because, like, I can pretty much never miss a Mikiri counter on, like, a general spear-wielding enemy. However, with this guy, I just constantly lose. Oh my god, the fucking bald asshole again. What do I need to do to not attract his attention? Guess I just need to stand up here. I mean, I'll probably have to assassinate the fucking boss again, but oh well. Almost five hour mark. Yeah, we'll be ending in a couple minutes here. Oh, 
my god, this fucking dude, just go away! Come on. Fuck. Damn it. Come on. Ah, shit. Didn't block in time. I'm gonna die here. Just kill me. There we go. Alright, boys. This has been a pretty long stream, so I think we are going to count it here. Got a lot further than I meant to. Well, I also meant to fucking play Dark Souls 2. But then, uh, naturally, Dark Souls 2 tism to the point of being completely dysfunctional. And then we actually, unironically, started playing <laughs> a good Dark Souls game. Or a good FromSoft game, rather. Quitter. I've been streaming for five hours, and I need to get the next video for the Highlights channel done for tomorrow. I think I have a reason to quit. But, remember, next Thursday, not next Thursday, two Thursdays from now, April 18th, we will be playing your PC safety from DS2, yeah, that is true. April 18th, we will be back here, probably the same time, either 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, for... No Rest for the Wicked, the new Moon Studios game. We are going to play that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then after that stream, we'll be, looks like, uh, doing this every other Monday. So, it was uh, very fun uh, doing this stream for you guys. Glad that we, oh, you know, hold on, before I do this, let me make sure I didn't miss any super chats. I don't want to get anyone angry again. Oh yeah, it looks like I missed a couple. What do you think about the Metro series? Uh, so in terms of the books, I really like the first one and the third one. I don't care too much for the second one. I think the writing style is better or more refined, but I don't care too much for the story. In terms of the games, love the first game's story, not in love with its gameplay. Second game, love its gameplay. I like parts of its story. And then the third game, I think, is the best, with the best balance of story and gameplay. It's got issues on both ends, but generally pretty good. Is Synthetic Man the next Jared Genesis? Oh, we just need to see if he starts messaging minors on Twitter, and then we'll know for sure. Otherwise, he's got all the other uh, calling cards of Jared Genesis, for sure. Anyway, that appears to be all. It was very fun talking to you guys. And remember, April 18th, about this time, 2 or 3 o'clock EST. Of course, I will make another scheduled stream, so you guys know when it's happening before it happens. And after that, we'll be doing every other Monday. So, once again, it has been pleasant talking with all of you. And I will see you all some other time. Goodbye.